to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the all-new completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Welcome to Rogers Center. It's a beautiful, cool night here at Rogers Center. The roof at Rogers Center wide open. The Dodgers, their series finale, and they have been red hot looking for their 10th straight road win. Don Mattingly's club has scored 33 runs in the last three ball games, and they are really swinging the bats well. Now it's time to take a look at the Dodger lineup. It's brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. Great bats up and down the order, plus a lot of speed. Right at the top of the order, Crawford and Puig can really run. Then Adrian Gonzalez, a 300 hitter, Hanley Ramirez. After the All Star break, he has gotten off to a great start of 409. Clip, he's 9 for 22 with a pair of home runs. And right behind him, another red hot bat, the center fielder, Andre Ethier, left handed bat, who's 4 for 10 in his series with four extra base hits. Tough assignment for Espiel Rogers, who will go to the mound for the Blue Jays to try to snap this six game losing streak. 32 games for Esmil Rogers this season. He's pressed into the rotation because of some injuries to Jay Happ, Brandon Morrow. One of 13 pitchers to start for the Blue Jays this season. In the bullpen, he made 23 appearances before it started. In fact, he has a lower whip as a starter, holds batters to a lower average as a starter. But the problem has been the home run. He's given up 10 of them this season, eight as a starter he's going to have to get that fastball inside we talked about it in the opening that he's got to make those batters move their feet I think it's really imperative against the right handed batters tonight the power hitters like Puig and Ramirez to get inside with that fastball defensively in the outfield it's Melky Cabrera Colby Rasmus returns to center and Jose Bautista left to right Laurie and Reyes on the left side. Asturias and Conachion on the right side. Jim here and CB is back behind the plate. And Ismael Rogers will try to snap this losing streak. Colby Rasmus off day yesterday. He's given the Blue Jays great range in center field. He's played really well out there this season. So Rasmus is set in center. Ismael Rogers will go through his ritual of paying tribute to his father by putting his initials behind the mound in that dirt behind the pitching rubber. Carl Crawford will step in and Crawford's had a good series. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. It is in there for a strike and we are underway. Crawford came to the Dodgers last year in that big trade with the Boston Red Sox. And he is healthy once again. He's had a lot of injuries since he left Tampa Bay. Tommy John surgery and wrist problems, but he is healthy once again. Bounced right back to Rogers. Goes to Encarnacion. Crawford's retired. One down. He's a good athlete, Esmiel Rogers. Time now for the scanner report brought to you by TD Bank. Proud sponsor of your Toronto Blue Jays. First five starts. His ERA 243. In the last three, it's jumped up to six, and it's because of the home runs. He's given up way too many home runs. He's been working on that sinker, and at times it's been good, but he's very inconsistent with it right now. And when he doesn't have it working, that fastball is pretty straight. And has led to the home runs. Yasiel Puig, the young right fielder, takes one off the plate outside. Quig is 22 years old, and he has really captured the imagination of the Dodger fans in Southern California. Reminiscent of a little Manny Wood and Fernando Mania, if you will. <laughs> I remember that in 1981 with Fernando Mania. Crowds were just going crazy whenever he would pitch. On the ground, Laurie at third base takes his time, and Quig is retired. Two quick outs for Rogers. Well, if Rogers is on, he should get a lot of ground ball outs. That sinking fastball has always been his best weapon as a starter. Something that Pat Henkin gave to him in a bullpen session, and it's proved to be a very good pitch for him. And it's act almost like he has another pitch. 
three or four different types. You can throw it on the outside corner, the inside corner. You can take a little something off. There's three additional pitches right there, but I think it's important that he keep the ball out of the middle of the plate. Adrian Gonzalez, the decisive blow in last night's game, a free run, a home run up there in Oliver. Turned the game around. Been a great hitter throughout his career. Right at 300 for the season. Fouls it back. Just could not get the ball where he wanted to. You could see they wanted that ball down and away. And Gonzalez, 17 career games now in Rogers Center. That was his seventh, probably the biggest hit of the night right there. Three run home run, and it took the Dodgers from trailing to ahead with one swing of the bat. It's a little looper. Reyes is going to watch it sail over his head and glance safely in left. Gonzalez can hit him out of the ballpark and he can dump it in front of the outfielders. You know, watching him hit, I don't know how you pitch to the guy. He's got great plate coverage in and out, up and down. Rogers actually threw a pretty good pitch right there. Like he jammed him with a fastball, but he's able to get enough of the wood of the bat on that one. Just dump it into left field. There are so many good hitters in this game. It's really interesting. Adrian Gonzalez entered this series with a 294 career batting average. He is 24th among active hitters. Two outs, Hanley Ramirez. He too is on that list. Hanley Ramirez just started this series at a 302 career batting average. He is currently 12th on the active batting average leaderboard. And boy, he is swinging a red hot bat right now. Hit hard, Lori to his left. You go to second for the force. Easy inning for Esmail Rogers. He's got all three outs on the ground. That's a good sign. Blue Jays trying to snap a six game losing streak. Jose Reyes is at the top of the order. He has hit well against Rick and Alasco. Right behind him is Melky Cabrera. He too has good numbers against the Dodger right hander. Six for 13. A double, a home run, and an RBI. Then down in the batting order, Colby Rasmus very quietly has put together a pretty good stretch over his last 17 games. 387 average with eight doubles and 11 ribbies. Rasmus swinging a pretty potent bat right now. Quietly, too. You know, you don't know if he has those type of numbers until you dig deep. This is Ricky Nolasco, acquired from the Miami Marlins for three minor league pitchers. Made three starts for the Dodgers. He's just one and one for Los Angeles. He's faced the Blue Jays once. No decision, two runs in six innings. What a nice addition for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Defensively, Skip Schumacher plays left field tonight. The Gold Glover, Andre Ethier's in center, and Quigs in right. Uribe and Ramirez on the left side. Ellison, the Gold Glover, Gonzalez at first base, and 
A.J. Ellis is behind the play. All right, he has done a good job. We got to see him in game number one. He's also thrown out 46% of the base stealers against him, second best in Major League Baseball. Off speed pitch is inside. It's 2 0 to Jose Reyes. Reyes, a two, excuse me, a 321 average for the season. He has hit well against Ricky Nolasco. Takes his strike. Ricky Nolasco is 30 years old. He was acquired on the 6th of July in a trade from the Miami Marlins. Bounced foul by Reyes. Nolasco grew up in Southern California, in Corona, California, just east of Anaheim. So you can bet he is thrilled to be in that Dodger uniform. Says he was a Dodger fan growing up. Two and two. Just off the plate outside. Boy, what an eye right there from Jose Reyes. According to pitch tracks, it was outside. Tough to take for Reyes. No problem. Runs the count to 3 2. Breaking ball outside, and Reyes will take the lead off walk. Take a look at the scattering report now for the right hander, Ricky Nolasco. These are the pitches that you will see from curveball, slider, splitter, and fastball. He'll use all of them at any time in the count. He is a strikeout type of pitcher. He has had some big seasons with the strikeouts when he is with the Marlins, averaging about a strikeout an inning. All of these Dodger pitchers do a good job of holding runners close at first, giving the catcher a chance to throw them out. You see Nolasco just trying to freeze Reyes. Reyes is feeling much better on the bases. That ankle is getting stronger all the time. He's got 10 steals and 11 attempts. Belki Cabrera takes one outside. Mentioning Cabrera's numbers, he's six for 13 against Ricky Nolasco. Jays have had some problems scoring some runs, getting things started. You might see John Gibbon try to open up his offensive game a little bit. Well, fouls it into the seats. Yeah, I agree with you. Why not roll the dice a bit? They've lost six straight. They had a comfortable lead last night only to see it evaporate. And I think right now when you look at the third baseman on your rebate he is guarding against the bunt. We don't see Cabrera bunt very often. Now that was just for show that first pitch right there. He wanted to take a look at Nolasco. And, and one of the other reasons why you might want to open it up especially early and in this situation here. Melky hits a lot of ground balls. And you don't want to. Have that leadoff walk go to waste with a double play grounder. So maybe you start the runner. Ray is not going. Pitches outside. It's two balls and a strike. Remember the Blue Jays revamped their lineup a bit. They put Cabrera in the two spot last night. Bautista back to his normal position, batting third, and then Connor shown in the cleanup spot. A little throw over right here from the last go. The universal flip of the thumb. Years ago, when the catcher flipped that thumb, that meant knock the hitter down. <laughs> but since they don't knock hitters down anymore, now they can use it for the throw over. He is an excellent throwing catcher. Big lead at first. He got him. Ricky Nolasco with a good throw to first and Adrian Gonzalez put a quick tag on Reyes and they picked Reyes off. Don't know if he was going but he got a bigger lead. But he was flinching like he was going and you're right. Adrian Gonzalez the gold glover snaps that ball down. Watch him right to the glove side. He steps back. He makes Reyes go to the back corner. And he's right there for the pickoff. Melky Cabrera. Three balls in his strike. Boy, you oftentimes don't appreciate the close calls umpires have to make. That was another close call. And Gonzalez made a swipe tag, and Paul Emmel was in great position to call it, and 
He was right on time. Bouncing ball. Gonzalez has it. He'll go to the bag and take it himself. Two outs. Sportsnet World is the pace for tonight's semifinal action from the CONCACAF Gold Cup. It's the U.S. and Honduras right now. Then Mexico and Panama at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. The semifinals of the CONCACAF Gold Cup on Sportsnet World. Great soccer action taking place right now. Two down. Jose Bautista. Bautista in the third spot last night. Drove in a couple, had an RBI single in the third, a solo home run in the fifth. He walked in his first at bat. That was with two outs in the first inning. Looked a little bit more comfortable at the plate, familiar surroundings in that number three spot. Outside. You know, and looking at him batting against Ricky Nolasco, he is right on top of the plate. Jose is saying, I don't think you can throw the ball by me. A little sinking fastball, he fights off. Nolasco got that ball inside. Well, back in that number three spot, back into the power swing. Breaky ball from Capuano and Jose Homer to left field. Some RBIs for Jose, some guys on base for him. Here's the 2 2 from Lalasco in the dirt. Full count Edwin Encarnacion will follow if Bautista can keep the inning alive. Ricky Nolasco making his second career start against the Blue Jays. Hit hard but foul outside of third. Here's another 3 2 pitch. Another foul out of play. Nolasco last pitched on Friday. Bautista is 0 for 4 against Ricky Nolasco in their head to head meetings. Nolasco has been a winner. Yeah, been a winner and a guy who'll take the ball and give you innings. Breaking ball in there for strike three. Bautista caught looking at that breaking ball. Ricky Nolasco picks off Reyes and strikes out Bautista. It's scoreless after one at Rogers Center.
Friday, July 26th. The Houston Astros will be in town to take on the Blue Jays. The game starts at 7.07 p.m. Come on down to Rogers Center early and check out the pre-game festivities happening outside of Gate 10. There are great prizes to be won. Enjoy the live music, and there's a licensed stereo. Gates open at 4.30 p.m. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. You can always log on to BlueJays.com and order your tickets or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. Summer Fan Friday Festivals right here at Rogers Center. Be the number five hitter in the Dodger lineup starting things off. Andre Eath here. He's had a big series. Three doubles and a home run. Well, that's good pitch. Fastball that catches the outside corner. Eath here wasn't so sure about it. Well, he's going to have to stay right there. He has had his problems, Esmeal Rogers, against Tampa Bay with the home runs. But if you continue to stay where he is right there, look at those first two pitches to Ethier. One on the outside corner, one on the inside corner. He'll be fine. Now you can go up and in, I think. Hit one of those quadrants of the strike zone. Trying to go upstairs, and he does. And Ethier is late. 96 with that high heater. And it's free and easy too, isn't it? That fastball. He's got great arm action, I think. Long arms. And it's almost like a buggy whip getting in there at 96 miles an hour. Upstairs again, and he has to bend back out of the way. Well, you made a great point about Rogers' first pitch down and away, second pitch inside. The hitter then has to think about both sides of the plate. So you come up or up and in and then establish that inside part again. One and two. Adrian Gonzalez had a little bloop single in the first inning with two outs. Rogers was able to strand him. So you got Hanley Ramirez to ground into the fielder's choice. Boy, this Dodger team, we mentioned they are swinging red hot bats. 33 runs scored in their last three games. There's another base hit for Eth here, his fifth of the series. You know, he was throwing the fastball, and Eth here, you could tell by the way he was swinging that he was looking for an off speed pitch and just don't throw it. And Espiel does. Spins a breaking ball up there, and he. Starts off the inning with a, a hit, and you mentioned this is a hot team. 33 runs. It's been a while since they've done that over the last three games. It's averaged 11 runs a game for the last three. Last time they have scored that many runs is going back to 2006. They scored 36 runs in a three-game series at Coors Field against the Rockies. A.J. Ellis playing last night's game. Had a career game. In the series opener on Monday, he had four hits for a career high, drove in a career high five runs, and scored three runs, also a career high. He's not going to want to leave this place. Yeah, stay right here. He doesn't want to see the end of July either. He's swinging a, a hot bat really for the whole month of July. Right at 300. Yeah, well, isn't it something though when a couple of guys get hot and it just spreads throughout the whole lineup? Well, when they promoted Yasiel Puig on the 3rd of June, and right after that, Hanley Ramirez came off the disabled list. They had two red hot bats. So that takes the pressure off everybody else. Nobody knew what Puig was going to do. And he went off. He had one of the best first months in the history of the game. 44 hits in his first month in the big leagues. Ball on a strike to the Dodger catcher inside, and Rogers said he was going to make a move their feet. Talk about the impact of a batter having to move around in the batter's box. Well, look at A.J. Ellis, who's out. He's about five, ten feet outside the batter's box, walking around trying to regroup after that. Fastball buzzed inside, lost his toe hole, they call it, up at that batter's box where you lose that good feel finding that grip in the dirt with your feet. Now you got to go dig another hole. 
feel comfortable. You move your feet around like that. It's tough to get back in there and feel the same way before that pitch. Dallas is right at the back line of that batter's box. Two and one. Rogers set. That one was inside and hit Ellis. And he's taking a long, slow walk to first base. So the first two reach here in the second. Obviously, not what Rogers had in mind when he came inside. Yeah, not with two strikes. Right in the thigh. Ellis is going to take his base. It looked like he was trying to throw a little bit too hard right there. The ball got away from well, him. Well, and it always gets back to you. Stay in your delivery. Try to command your pitches. And I think you're right. I think he reached back for a little extra and the ball got away from him. So it cost him a base runner, Skip Schumacher, who is in left field tonight. Schumacher hit a home run here on Friday night. A three run a home run in the seventh inning his first homer of the season. Tom Mattingly making sure he keeps everybody sharp obviously in the National League with pitcher hitting you're going to have your extra men get at bats more frequently than you do when playing American League rules. He's done a good job with the DH rotating guys in and out of there this whole series. And they're playing with a short bench tonight. They disabled Matt Kemp, who sprained his ankle on Sunday in Washington. We saw him before the game. He was in a walking boot. He is now on a disabled list. They have added Ted Lilly, the former Blue Jay, to the active roster. Lilly, of course, is a starting pitcher. So they've got a three man bench. Hot shot right through the legs of Rogers. Ethier is going to be stopped at third with nobody out. So a single hit batter and a hot shot right over the mound and the Dodgers have something cooking here in the second. Hot team. Too much of the plate right down the middle and it goes right through the wickets. Of Esmil Rogers no chance for the runner Ethier to score on that one from second base. Look at Reyes over from shortstop trying to encourage Rogers and Encarnacion there as well. This is a team that Need somebody to step up and put a stop to this. They have lost six straight. They've lost five straight coming out of the All Star game. That's reaching franchise historic proportions for losses coming out of the All Star break. Franchise record is eight. And that happened in the first year of the Blue Jays, 1977. Uribe goes after the first pitch and hits it deep to center. Rasmus back. He makes the catch. Ethier tags and comes in to score from third. So Uribe, a notorious first ball hitter, jumped on that first pitch and picks up the first run of the ball. He's had a couple of home runs off of Esmil Rogers also. That's why we highlighted Colby Rasmus on the defense. He has shown great ability to go and get the ball in the gap. Great range in center field, and he was going to need all of it right there. Runs that one down and saves a couple of runs. Uribe has hit well against Rodgers in the past, four for seven. And Pat mentioned he's got a pair of home runs against Rodgers. He has an RBI now. Mark Ellis, the number nine hitter. Lori makes a nice play on the hot shot. Second for one, back to first double play. What a play by Brett Lori to start the 5 4 3 double play. Rogers minimizes the damage. He had the bases loaded and nobody out. Holds the Dodgers to a single run, helped out by some nifty defense at third. Lori to his stewards to Encarnacion. 
double play. Say Reyes and Edwin Encarnacion came to the mound after Rogers loaded the bases with nobody out, and they're both talking to Rogers and Reyes with an emphatic pounding of the glove, saying, "Let's go, let's get out of this thing." And Rogers minimized the impact. He got a sack fly, and then Brett Laurie started a terrific inning-ending double play to get Rogers out of a jam. There were some hard-hit balls that inning, but some great defensive plays. Rasmus in center field saved a couple of runs. Brett Laurie at third base. He is so quick and so explosive at third base. Perfect on this turf in this ballpark here. Yeah, as fast as it is, he has the reactions to make the play. And you can see Mark DeRosa was impressed, obviously, with the way he was looking at Lori. You know what DeRosa's saying easy. to him right now? Saying, I'm glad you're over there tonight, not me. <laughs> he was there the last couple of nights with the lefty on the mound. Yeah, he said, kid, don't make it look that easy. You make me look bad. Trying to show him with a big swing, he fouls it off. Two sixty-six for double A. Twenty-six homers and seventy-four driven in. Ricky Nolasco retired the side in order in the first. He picked off Jose Reyes after a leadoff walk. Little bouncing ball toward third. Uribe bare hands it and throws the first in time. The Uribe made a do or die play and throws out in Carnassi. He has played on the left side for most of his career. Some shortstop, some third base. That ball came right up to him. I don't know if he gets Edwin Encarnacion if he tries to go glove. Transfer and then throw. Uribe with a nice play. Uribe was the starting shortstop for the World Series champion San Francisco Giants in 2010. Adam Lind may have found something out during the game in last night's game. He hit a double in his final at bat, but had made some in game adjustments. Yeah, made the adjustment in that seventh inning, talking with Chad Matol about better weight balance. Put a little bit more weight out on that front foot. Felt like he was getting too far back and he was just fouling a lot of balls to left field. They went and they worked on it, balanced out that weight 50 50 on both those legs, and he hit a smoking pee against Kenley Jansen last night. A one out double to the base of the wall in center. And then watched him today in batting practice, and the bat was really flying through the strike zone. There's right, another pretty good pitch to hit when he was hot. He never missed those pitches. And that's what's got him a little baffled right now. 
Let the swing bring you forward. You can't force it forward. Inside. Full count to Lind. You know, those are the type of adjustments. You happen to get hot for a few weeks and then something doesn't feel right. You get right back in the cage and you start working. He reaches for that pitch and it's going to be you know, out of play. It's also the benefit of DHing where you can do this. You can see a little bit behind him right there. Still not catching the ball out in front. That bat at the point of contact should be about a foot further out in front. Yeah. That's what hitters refer to when they say they got beat by that pitch. Although they make contact out in front of home plate, it's not extension. And it's all because he's still a little bit too far back on his backside. He went around. Second strikeout for Nolasco. Lynn strikes out. That's the second out of the inning. Check swing by Lynn. He's trying to sell it right there to the home plate umpire, Will Little. But he wasn't going to have that. Pretty good diving fastball right there from Nolasco. Bobby Rasmus watches one bend outside. We mentioned Rasmus over his last 17 games is hitting at a 387 clip. Quietly got that batting average up to 267. Now that's the one thing that Rasmus is conscious of. Trying to maintain the momentum in the second half. Last year he really fell off with the average in the second half. I like being that type of hitter where well, let me just go do my thing. Nobody make a big deal about it. Talk about somebody else and maybe they'll concentrate on some of the big hitters in the lineup and I can go out there and just do my thing. That's what Colby's been doing. Fans if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca and you keep your eye out later on in the game for the home hardware ask the experts segment. To make sure you log on to ask the experts at sportsnet.ca. Two balls, two strikes. Asmus stays alive. He got a piece of it. Ricky Nolasco is a guy that can rack up some strikeouts. A couple years ago, he had nine straight strikeouts, just one shy of the major league record held by the great Tom Seaver. And you can see he's got pretty good command of all of his pitches, and he is. Really unpredictable. Yeah, you're liable to see anything at any time. A little curveball, a little slider, maybe a little split, use a fastball, turn it over. He had a season not too long ago with the Marlins where he had 195 strikeouts in just 185 innings. And there's another strikeout against Erasmus. Back to back strikeouts. That's how the Right-hander ends the second. Dodgers have a one-nothing lead.
season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Of course, that's a great statue of the late Ted Rogers outside of Gate 6 here at Rogers Center. It was unveiled yesterday in a beautiful ceremony prior to the ball game. Ted Rogers' family was in attendance. His wife, Loretta, spoke to the crowd and the tenors. A nice job of entertaining the gathered crowd. Great ceremony yesterday afternoon to honor the memory of Ted Rogers. We'll have to go out there. Oh, it's take beautiful. A look at that. Yeah, they did a good job. Call Crawford with the base hit. Crawford was one for five in the game last night. He had three hits in the opener. He's starting to heat up just a little bit. Curveball right here. Crawford stayed back on that one. And we have talked about how he has put up some good numbers in this ballpark. Good start here in the third inning. Well, Crawford's always been a guy that's loved to hit in this ballpark and continues to do that. Lead off single. Yasiel Puig hits a shot to left field. Milky Cabrera looking up. It's off the wall. Crawford can fly. He's being waved around. They've got a shot, but Reyes missed the cutoff. Cabrera handcuffed Jose Reyes with a low throw. Reyes had perfect position, played it off to the side, but he couldn't make a play on the short hop. Puig picks up the RBI. Well, he's going to have to start locating a little bit better. Last inning, Dodgers started hitting the ball hard. Puig thought he got all of that one, but it was a line drive with topspin. Here's that play you were talking about. Not a very good throw right there from Cabrera. You want to get it to that first cutoff man. Reyes has the stronger arm that Asturias. He short hopped him, and there was no chance to get Crawford then. Threw it right at the feet of Reyes, probably the worst place he could have thrown it. Adrian Gonzalez already has a hit tonight. They were waving Carl Crawford, but he had slowed down a little bit before it got to third base. So there was going to be a play at the plate if the cutoff throw was a little bit better. Tim Wallach, the third base coach, former Expo, was scoring Crawford all the way. Well, the Dodgers have kept constant pressure on the Blue Jays, and here's Crawford. He sees the play right in front of him. Slowed down. You see him just a little bit, but still being waved. But it doesn't cost him because the poor throw from the outfield. Gonzalez waves at that off-speed pitch. So the Dodgers scored a single run in the last... Their last hit bat, sack fly off the bat of Juan Uribe, and now Puig has an RBI double. Two and two. Well, you saw Puig, after he hit the ball, thought it was a home run. And Cadillac it out of the batter's box, but he's got such great speed and the throw went to cut off, man. He got to second easily. No need to do that when you're a young player in the big leagues a couple of months. You'll have plenty of time to to do that. And Dallas fouls it off, stayed on that outside pitch. Adrian Gonzalez has always been a guy that can cover everything, and especially with two strikes. We're talking about a guy that's a career 294 hitter. Against the Blue Jays for his career, he's at 313. He looks so effortless at the plate. Watching from that shot right there, that center field shot. It looks like you can get him away because he stands off the plate. But he's got outstanding plate coverage. He can take that ball away from him and shoot it in the left field. Bounces this ball to second. His Sturis will go to first. Gonzalez is out on the plate. Puig moves from second to third. 
So it's a productive at bat for Gonzalez moving the base runner up. And now Rogers will have to deal with Hanley Ramirez with a runner at third and one out. Ramirez hit the ball sharply his last time up. Infield is trying to save a run early in the game. Yep. It's the run you save early you might come back and help you later. The right side of the infield is in a little bit closer. Left side can stay back the way Ramirez has been hitting it. And Sebia blocks that ball, keeps it close to home plate. Good job of shifting his feet. Watch how he shifts his feet over and gets in front of that ball. Puig with explosive speed just 90 feet away at third. Fastball at 95 and Rogers is ahead. Here's where Aaron CB really has to get it in his mind. If you call for the breaking ball, the only place it's going to cause you trouble is to your right. That ball in the dirt. So you've got to shift your weight a little bit very subtly to get quick to the right. Anticipate one. That's there it good. is. Breaking ball and Ramirez strikes out. Two down. The all new completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX, the luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Beautiful night at Rogers Center. 21 degrees at the start of play, and it couldn't be nicer. Very little humidity in the area, and it feels like a fall day. Dodgers have a 1 0 lead. Andre Ethier. Excuse me, two nothing. They've added a run here in the second. Ethier scored the first run of the ball game. Yes, yeah, a big strikeout right there. S. Mill Rogers picked a, a good time to pick up his first strikeout. Runner at third base, less than two outs. Now he's got to get Ethier. He's been swinging a hot bat. Got to save that run. Bouncing ball is Sturis waits on it and Rogers is out of the inning, but the Dodgers tack on an extra run. Yasiel Puig at RBI double LA has a two-nothing lead. It'll be the bottom third of the Blue Jays order when we come back. Meister is Sturis, followed by JP Aaron Sevia and Brent Lori. Lori had two hits and two RBIs in last night's game.
completely re-engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Beautiful evening in Toronto. Big night for a quiet sail on Lake Ontario. Blue Jays trying to get back in this ball game. Dodgers have a two nothing lead. It'll be Meister Asturias to lead things off. Takes a first pitch strike from Ricky Nolasco. Asturias facing Nolasco for the first time goes after that breaking ball. Bounces it past first foul. We mentioned Alaska was acquired by the Dodgers on the 6th of July, a midseason trade. You were involved in a midseason trade. What kind of adjustments does he have to deal with? Well, really, not a lot of adjustments, so to speak, because he was in the National League and he just heads over to the Dodgers. But when you go to a team midseason, like especially a team that's in last place, going to a team in first place, you want to fit in. You want to be part of that team right away. You want to help out your team. You want to pitch good games or get big hits for your team and feel welcome right away. He's pitched well, but he just hasn't won too many games. That ball may have hit in the last go. Mark Ellis stays with it, makes a nice play to throw out his stress. One out. Ricky Nolasco has had five consecutive double digit wins seasons. You see his numbers with the Marlins. 385 of respectable ERA, but it's even been better here. Opponent's batting average is elevated since he's joined the Dodgers, as is the whip. But Jack Morris, our broadcasting partner on the radio, mentioned a great point about Nolasco now with high expectations with the Dodgers, and he made a great analogy. He said, when you play with better golfers you have a tendency to play a little bit better well it's the same for baseball players you put them in a good atmosphere and they're going to be a little bit better in their focus and paying attention to detail You're really playing for something now I mean when you are with the last place team it gets terrible you start playing for yourself and you become very selfish you're not thinking about wins but when you play for a team that's got something on the line you'll do anything to try and help that team win J.P. Aaron Seaman behind 0 and 2 hits this ball hard on the line to left, but Skip Schumacher is there. Nolasco with two quick outs here in the third. Well, you make a great point because when you are on a good team and the Dodgers have dramatically turned their season around, going from last place on the 21st of June to first place as we open up play here on the 24th of July. Every little thing you do on the field is magnified because it has an impact in a winning effort. Adrian Gonzalez, his at bat last inning. He was the guy who hit the big three run home run in last night's game. What did he do last inning with a runner at second base and nobody out? Moved him up 90 feet, grounded out to second base. That run scores. It didn't. Rogers got out of it. But his teammates, if that run scores, knows what he did well and think about Mattingly in his cleanup hitter Hanley Ramirez now Ramirez is hitting with one out guy at third base sack fly gets you another mm -hmm. run players appreciate those good at bats and the little extra contributions that sometimes get overlooked Carl Crawford comes from a winning atmosphere with the Tampa Bay Rays went to Boston didn't work out there for him but here he is right back in a pennant race with the Dodgers Two and one, two outs. Brett Lorry takes one off the plate outside. Do you have the mindset that players learn how to win? It's a an acquired skill. I think you can. Uh, well, let's hold that thought. Brett Laurie flies out to center field. Heath here makes the catch, and we'll talk a little bit more about the acquired skill of learning how to win.
Obsolete Canada. Moncton, New Brunswick, August 8th, 9th, and 10th at Kiwanis Park. That's the site. And the instructors include the Hall of Famer, Roberto Alomar, Homer Bush, Jesse Barfield, Juan Beniquez, and Dwayne Ward. Visit BlueJays.com slash Baseball Academy for more information. The Toronto Blue Jays are proud supporters of Bamboo Baseball across Canada. Top of the fourth inning, the catcher, A.J. Ellis, was hit by a pitch his first time up. Honda Super Camps are very popular, and there's one taking place right here at Rogers Center. They had day one of the camp this morning, and Pat Tabler was involved. Pat, you have a good turnout? Had a great turnout, and the kids were fired up. And the, the thing I am taking away from day number one right here is I don't know if I have enough ibuprofen <laughs> to get me through till tomorrow. <laughs> uh, my bottle's almost empty. Well, you had the Tabler family baseball game last night here <laughs> after the Blue Jays game. So I'm sure you've thrown a few pitches since last night. A.J. Ellis bounces it up the middle. Reyes can't make a play. It sneaks under his glove into center. Lead off single for the Dodger catcher. But the Blue Jays on the Super Camps are great opportunities for kids across Canada that you get some top flight instruction and you can see efforts like Jose Reyes gives you right here but just passed his glove before he could fully extend under the glove and he had a chance of throwing him out it's great to see Cecil Fielder today and Sean Green haven't seen them for a couple of years got to work with Frank Catalano today what a pleasure that was that's a great opportunity to have all of you guys out there with so much major league experience and from time to time, Robbie Alomar, the Hall of Famer, is going to show up. But the Blue Jays and Dwayne Ward did a terrific job of yeah. putting this together. Cito Gaston came out today and finished off the first day with a little 10 or 15 minute talk with all the campers. Robbie will show up on Friday and be here. And Schumacher with two balls and no strikes. And I hope Ward is listed because you're right, he is the best. And they, they break about halfway through, and I ran into Wardo, and he was drenched right his shirt was just soaking <laughs> wet and said I go wow Wardo you're really putting in a big first first day here he goes no we're just talking down there in the bullpen today <laughs> <laughs> I'm like he's like pouring sweat everywhere he gets into it three and oh Rogers falls behind Schumacher well you can remember Dwayne Ward and I have a vivid vivid image of him on the mound looking in for the side and the sweat just running off the bill of his cap Probably had long sleeves on too, didn't he? <laughs> He's the best. There's a strike. It's three and one. Dodgers have a two nothing lead. Blue Jays looking for their first hit. AJ Ellis with a leadoff single takes his lead at first. Not running. Ball four. So Rogers walks Schumacher, and this is exactly the same way the second inning started. A leadoff single in the second by Ethier, then Ellis was hit by a pitch. This time it's A.J. Ellis with the leadoff single, and Schumacher walks. So first and second, nobody out. First two batters in the third inning reaching. So too many base runners for Rogers. He's going to have to come back here like he did in the second inning, get that double play to help him out. Juan Uribe had a sack fly back in the second. Sinking fastball well out of the zone. Rogers wasn't close. Uribe is a terrific first ball hitter, but he wasn't going to chase that pitch. We mentioned Uribe spent some time with the Dodgers and, or excuse me, with the Giants as well as the Dodgers. Part of that World Series effort in 2010. Side is 2 0. Oh. Uribe was also on the White Sox team in 2005 that won the World Series. And here he is in a, another good situation with the Dodgers. I thought he was with the White Sox. I wasn't really sure. But you're right. He had 16 home runs that year for the White Sox. 
drove in 71. He had nine postseason RBIs for the Dodgers in 2010. And he only had seven hits, but nine RBIs. He was a clutch hit and delivered. Pete Walker with a stern message to Rogers. He's pitching from behind, and that's a disastrous formula for a pitcher. Pete always talks about timing with Esmeel Rogers. Get the ball out of the glove a little bit faster. Get the arm up so you can stay on plane. Right now, he's a little bit slow coming out of his delivery, and he's pulling off the ball. Rogers and Aaron Seavey having trouble getting their heads together. Now they're set. Uve with a wild swing and a miss. Mentioned Ismail Rogers had trouble with Tampa Bay. The home runs last time he faced Tampa Bay gave up four home runs. He's allowed 12 home runs to the Rays in his career. And he's also allowed 11 home runs to the Giants. That's where he faced Uribe in the past. When he was with Colorado, Esmeal was with Colorado at the time. If the sinker's working, and we saw it in the first inning, we saw three ground ball outs in the first inning. He can get one on the ground here and get two for one. He is back in the at bat. It's two and two now. Uribe has dealt with injuries each of the last two seasons. Played 77 games in 2011. He had a bad hip flexor and had a sports hernia. And then last year, he had a wrist problem that held him to just 66 games. Nobody out. Dodgers at first and second. Way outside. Full count. Mark Ellis is on deck. Ellis hit into a double play his first time up. Dodgers have scored two runs on six hits. They've stranded three already in this ballgame. A.J. Ellis, the catcher at second. Skip Schumacher at first. Popped up. Left side of the diamond. Reyes shuffling back into the outfield. Makes the catch. The infield fly rule was in effect. One down. Ismail Rogers, one of 13 starters the Blue Jays have used this season, and that was an area where they thought they'd improved. If you look at the pitching after 99 games a year ago, the rotation was a little bit better last year. Yeah, compare it after 99 games. This is number 100 for the Blue Jays. They won 38 games at this point last year from their starters. This year, just 24. The ERA is worse. Opponent's batting average and whip much higher. And it's a surprise. Yeah. It, it really is. When, when the season started, I can't find anybody who didn't think that the starting rotation was better this year than last year. Well, you had R.A. Dickey, who is coming off a Cy Young season with the Mets. Mark Burley and Josh Johnson, three veteran pitchers, who expected to be better. Then yeah. Jay Happ got hit in the head, and he pitched well last night in his rehab. And you think Brandon Morrow is going to take the next step, but uh, Ricky Le Romero, you say, well, that was an aberration last year. What happened to him? And, and really, we haven't seen either of those two this year. Ellis behind 0 and 2. The Blue Jays are really concerned now about Brandon Morrow. He hasn't been able to pitch. He's not making much progress at all. Then today, Alex Anthopoulos suggested there's possibility Morrow might not pitch this year. That is brutal news if that's true. That if he can't make it back for the Blue Jays. Strike three call. Mark Ellis didn't like the call. You can see him telling the home plate umpire, Will Little, that ball is up and off the plate, but Ellis will pack his back back to the dugout. But he let the umpire know he didn't like the call. Just a little comeback fastball right there. If here in CBS holds it just 
a little longer to try and frame it and gets the call. And from pitch effects, it's right on the corner. Carl Crawford. He's one for Chiefs quarter run in the third inning. We had a leadoff single and scored on the RBI double by Yasiel Puig, who was on deck. So far, Rogers has been able to minimize the damage. He's an out away from getting around a first and second, nobody out situation. Did a good job in the second. He had bases loaded and nobody out and held the Dodgers to a single run. Gave up six hits, a hit batter, and a walk. So he's had eight base runners to deal with already. Yeah, he's walking a tightrope, that's for sure. One and up, oh, down and away. It's a ball and a strike. They are in the fourth inning. Dodgers have had base runners on each inning. Crawford chased that pitch down and in. That shows you the kind of stuff that Espiel Rogers has when you get those types of swings or check swings. Pretty nasty. Except to a little bit more refined and a little more consistency with those pitches. Well, what a job by Rogers. He overmatched Paul Crocker with that inside fastball. Two strikeouts in the inning, and once again, he gets around the tough situation. The Dodgers leave a pair. Crawford strikes out with the emergency half, but they have a 2 nothing lead. Since being acquired in that trade from the Miami Marlins, and there are three starters in the ballpark tonight that pitched for Miami last year. One year ago today, on July 24, 2012, Mark Burley, Josh Johnson, Ricky Velasco were all in the rotation for the Marlins. And you can see Burley and Johnson, most notably, much better records a year ago than this season. Johnson has but one win. Well, the thing that jumps out at me is their own run average. Uh, they, they all had losing records then, they all have losing records now, but the ERAs have jumped on those teams. The other thing that jumps out at me is the Miami Marlins have said, okay, we're going to start all over and go with all our young guys. All of them traded since last year. But it was interesting how quickly the Marlins changed directions. Because they signed Burley and they signed Reyes, they signed Heath Bell, all the free agents in the previous offseason. Then they switched gears. <laughs> they got Reyes too. And uh, 
and it only took about two or three months into the season. I think they made up their mind sometime last summer. That's it. Reyes drives it to right. Puig got a late break, gets back at the wall, makes the catch. He is learning on the fly in the big leagues, but he has such great physical talents. His speed allows him to make up for his inexperience. You know, and another reason why he's being compared to someone like Bo Jackson, who was very raw when he first came up and made up for mistakes with great natural raw ability. And there it is on display again. Yeah. And in talking with Trey Hillman, who's the bench coach for the Dodgers, he said he doesn't think there's anything that Quig doesn't think he can do on a baseball field. He is like if he can see a baseball, he's got a chance to catch it. That's half the battle, isn't it? <laughs> Confidence, being able to do whatever you need to do. Melky Cabrera quickly behind 0-2. Bo Jackson was the same way. He was the same way. There was nothing on the field that he didn't think he could do, including hitting left-handed. Yeah. A little looper in the left field. Hammy Ramirez ranges back, makes the catch. Two outs. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tampa Bay first swept the Blue Jays here before going into Fenway Park, and they start play tonight, half a game and a half behind the Red Sox. They've won eight of their last ten games. They lost last night. John Lester was pretty good. And the home plate umpire, Will Little. Boy, he caught that flush. That pitch from the last go. No chance for A.J. Ellis to get a glove on it. George Pulis out quickly to attend to the umpire. Looked like an inside fastball. You can see he's set up on the outside part of the plate and catches his. Left arm. Yeah, hit him right on the arm, and he had that inside position with the inside chest protector. George Poole's making sure that he's okay, but you can see that caught him flush. And you know, you get in behind the catcher, and you just anticipate they're going to catch it. Watch his left arm as it's fully exposed, and it caught him just below the elbow. Boy, that hit him hard. It looked like Ellis had moved to the outside part of the plate that they wanted that fastball outside. Umpires move with the catcher, don't they? Yeah. When you go outside, he's going to try to get on that inside corner. And then, of course, he was really exposed. Really exposed. And when that ball came back over the inside part of the plate, Ellis couldn't get it to it. And now they're going to ask for a bottle of water. George Poulos sensing it. He wants to give Will Little just a time to regroup a bit. Of course, that didn't happen back in the day, did it, Buck? Well, we were talking about umpires and the new equipment, of course. The umpires now wear the inside chest protector. You can see the shoulder pads underneath his shirt. And when I first came in the league, and for a long time, umpires had that big balloon protector. And they'd get both arms out of harm's way they'd stand right directly behind the catcher and they were really protected but then that balloon protector went away first of all in the National League mm -hmm. and then later on in the American League and now of course the umpires are on their one umbrella there are no more league umpires they're Major League Baseball umpires under one umbrella. But yeah, you wouldn't have seen this happen years ago with that big blue. Protector. I remember seeing it. It was just leaving when I was yeah. getting to the big leagues, but there were still few umpires, old time umpires who used to use them. Jerry Newdecker was one of them. And I remember playing when he was 
had that that big chest protector in the foul tips that would go back there and hit that. And my first thought was, thank goodness he yeah. has that because that's dangerous. I mean, it's really dangerous. It's like an air mattress. It was an old air mattress type of thing. You'd blow it up. It was inflated. It had padding. It had a handle right in the middle where they could put their right hand on that handle and hide behind that big balloon protector. But, well, Little says he's okay. He's going to continue, but that ball's going to leave a yeah, mark. That's going to leave a mark. And I'll tell you what. I wouldn't do that job right there. That's dangerous. Now checking to make sure it's one ball and no strikes, two outs. Cabrera retired on the pop up to the shortstop. Bautista struck out looking his first time up. Breaking ball bounced in the dirt. They had mentioned Ricky Molasco had recorded nine straight strikeouts back in 2009. It happened on September 9, 2009, against the Atlanta Braves. That's just one off the major league record of 10 strikeouts. Tom Seaver has that record. Nine in a row had been done just four times in major league history. And according to Elias Sports Bureau, it's never happened in the American League. Three and one. Bautista will take the walk. It comes with two outs. It's the first walk issued by Ricky. No, excuse me, the second walk. He walked the leadoff man, Jose Reyes, to start the game and then picked Reyes off at first. And those nine strikeouts, just to finish that one up, part of a 16 strikeout game. For Nalaska, so he has that ability to pick up the K balls. Got three of them tonight. Edwin Encarnacion bats with two outs off the plate. Garnison thought about it, but laid off. It's two and up. Well, Nolasco had to wait around quite a while while they attended to the home plate umpire, Will Little. Seems like he's having trouble finding the strike zone. Didn't look like he had a chance to throw either while he was standing around out there. This is lifted into center field. Ethier broke back. Now he comes in. The inning is over. Ricky Velasco leaves a base runner. We'll go to the fifth. It's two nothing Dodgers. Now it's time for Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio.
Local Golf Drive for Kids. Welcome to the ballpark. It's a gorgeous day at Rogers Center. While over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse, we welcome the St. Lawrence Youth Group. Welcome to Rogers Center. Hope you're having a great night. It's a good baseball ahead. It's a 2 0 game. Well, little the home plate umpire has a pressure bandage on that left forearm. He took a pitch right off the arm from Ricky Nolasco that AJ Ellis couldn't make a play on. And he's now got that pressure wrap bandage on his arm to hopefully keep the swelling down. Now, see how Puig has an RBI double. He's driven in two runs in this series. Tell you what, you can see how Quig has been able to get off to a good start. He's got a 371 batting average, but he's got tremendous speed. He had two infield hits in last night's game. Well, he swings at everything, and I think the pitchers were challenging him just to see what he could do when he first came up. He started hitting everything. Now they started throwing. Pitches off the plate. Strikeouts are starting to pile up. Well, he stayed on that pitch and drives it to right. Bautista was thinking about making the play to first, but in Conacion was well away from first base. Second hit for Puig. Quick bat. And that's what you see. Look, the muscles just ripping as he goes after that slider. Hits it hard in the right field. So hard that Bautista came up thinking about maybe making a play at first base. Quig defected from Cuba in 2012. The Dodgers signed him after a tryout in Mexico. They thought so much of his athleticism, they signed him to a 70 or seven year, $40 million contract. Adrian Gonzalez but first we'll check in on Queen. You know when you're watching young kids and you're scouting them and you're watching them hit all you have to do is listen to the ball hit the bat and you know when you've got somebody with some potential doesn't mean that they're going to be a major leaguer okay they're, they're going to have to do that on their own they're going to you're going to have to learn a little something about what's inside their mind and what's inside their heart. But if you sit there and watch a guy take batting practice and you listen and the sound of the bat hitting the baseball is louder than everybody else's, you know you've got something to work with. And you get that with this kid right here. There's a strike. It's one on one to Gonzalez. I agree with you. And the challenge for scouts in this day and age is the aluminum bat. And they hit with aluminum bats, but a good scout can sense when the ball is squared up in the sweet spot, jumps off the bat. Even an aluminum bat gives you a different sound. But boy, once you put wood in his hands, it's night and day. Yeah. And you can tell the difference. Puig's running, and there's a liner over his stores. Puig had made a step towards second. But then stopped and he will move up to second base. Gonzalez has his second hit of the night. Back to back hits and once again the Dodgers have the first two reach here in the fifth. See fourth time tonight that's happened. The last four innings. And he's only given up a couple of runs. A lot of base runners to deal with tonight for Esmeal Rogers. Well, the Dodgers sooner or later are going to kick the door in. Coming into this game tonight, in the first two games of this series, they were 14 for 29 with runners in scoring position. You just can't continue to give him scoring opportunities. Hanley Ramirez, he's 0 for 2. He breaks his bat and the ball is popped up back out of play. That bat split entirely the length of the bat. Well, that was dangerous. That sharp pointy edge heading right into the first row of stands here. 
slider off the end of the bat. Look at that. Everybody's looking at the ball. Tim Wallach doesn't see it. It pops right into the stand. Tim Wallach never saw the barrel of the bat go past him. He was concentrating on the baseball, and that's a ball player's first reaction. Mm -hmm. Look for the baseball. Of course, Wallach was a third baseman, so he's been on the field from that perspective his entire life. Oh, and one to Hanley Ramirez. Another pop up this on the right side. Encarnacion into foul territory. Ramirez is 0 for 3. One down. The all new completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX. The luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Beautiful shot of CN Tower from across Lake Ontario over to Center Island. And the Dodgers have stranded five base runners. They've got two on here in the fifth. Andre Ethier singled and scored in the second. Rogers looking for that ground ball. They've turned one double play behind Rogers so far tonight. Bouncing ball and Connor Show kicks it at first base and all oh, hands are going to be safe. Edwin got ahead of himself. He had double play on his mind and he will be charged with the air. That's his seventh air of the season. The fifth he's committed at first base. Well, he's been so good over there, but you're right. The ball popped out of his glove. Taylor made to his backhand side. If it drops straight down, maybe he picks it up and gets an out, but when it comes out of the glove, he kicks it right there. No chance to get anybody. Now, defense once again hurt the Blue Jays. They committed five errors in the series opener on Monday night. A.J. Ellis, the catcher, has been aboard twice. Bases are loaded. Ellis was hit by a pitch in the second single to start the fourth. But he couldn't get past second. He was stranded at second base as the Dodgers left a pair on in the fourth. Two nothing L.A. They have eight hits already. Another breaking ball. Another swing and a miss. Yeah, just keep spinning that slider up there like that. Down and away. Maybe you can get him to roll over on it. Hit a ground ball to the shortstop. He's come up with a couple of big strikeouts tonight with all these base runners that have helped them. Oh, and two. Strike three called another big strikeout, a three pitch strikeout of A.J. Ellis. Couple of sliders and then a fastball. Well, JP here and Sebia did a, a smart thing there. With two strikes, you see him tap the ground like it's going to be a curveball, signaling to the runner at second base that maybe it's a curveball. He flashes curveball to the hitter and he freezes Ellis with a fastball. A momentary hesitation. Two outs now. Bases remain loaded. Skip Schumacher goes after the first pitch and fouls it back to the screen. You've seen that before where catchers will tap the ground like hey I want this curveball down here in the dirt. Runner at second base can see that too. Even the guy on deck. If you got a good relationship with the guy behind you he will have some sort of key phrase to alert you hey breaking balls coming. He crossed him up. Made a good pitch. Rogers well, has been a magician tonight. Four times tonight, the first two Dodgers have reached safely. He's a strike away from getting out of it again. Dodgers have scored a single run in the second. 
Also added a run in the third. They have stranded five so far. They've got the bases loaded. And Rogers has pitched himself in and out of trouble all night. This is where you got to get to that scouting report. That's why you have it. What pitch do I need right here to get out of this? Took a shot. Missed down and away. Dodgers have a 2 nothing lead. They've collected eight hits off of Ismail Rogers. Reach the seats out of play up the left side. This is where Miss Neil Rogers can pick up his teammate right here. Edwin Encarnacion has done so much to help this club this year offensively and defensively. He's played multiple positions. Made an error right there. Rogers could pick up his teammate right here by retiring the side without a run score. Oh, you bet. And and Carnacion certainly rooting for that. Rogers struck out two to end the fourth. He is set. Two balls and two strikes. The bases are loaded. Puig's at third. Adrian Gonzalez at second. They both singled. And then Andre Ethier reached on the air by Edwin Encarnacion. Juan Uribe is on deck. Rodgers would like to leave him there. Breaking ball lifted to left. Cabrera. Comes in a few steps. The inning is over. The Dodgers have stranded eight. This Neil Rogers pitching out of jams. He picks up Edwin Encarnacion. It'll be Lynn starting things off, followed by Colby Erasmus and then Meiser Isturis. The Blue Jays looking for their first hit off of Ricky Nolasco. Lynn takes a first pitch strike from Ricky Molasco. Lynn struck out in the second. 
Lyndon Rasmus, followed by Meister and Sturis here in the fifth. Blue Jays have had two base runners reach base, a couple of walks, and Reyes was picked off in the first. They've stranded just one base runner. Mike Everett said Lind went around. Breaking ball bounced in the dirt, but Everett felt that Lind offered at it. Struck out on a check swing his first time up. Another breaking ball, and that's what the last go go to a lot of times. Majority of the time, he'll use that slider when he gets to two strikes. And pops it up high, but well back out of play. Ricky Nolasco is a lot like Anibal Sanchez, who the Marlins had and traded him to the Tigers. Really kind of quiet guys. They go about their business. They both have good command of the strike zone. And they have a wide assortment of pitches. You don't hear an awful lot about them, but boy, you start peeling back the numbers, and they're impressive. And they've got strikeout totals, big strikeout totals. One out. At that 13 is the number one source for live baseball. Listen to live audio. Follow games pitch by pitch and enjoy in-game video highlights. The app is available on the iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Android, and BlackBerry Z10. Season-long subscription packages are available at BlueJays.com. Kobe Rasmus, he struck out his first time up. It's interesting that you were talking about Anibal Sanchez because I was just thinking about him. I was like, I know there's another pitcher that the Marlins have that we saw last year when we went down there, and he's no longer there. Who was that? And it's Sanchez, so... They got rid of their whole team. Ripped down the right side, but just barely foul as Rasmus made a bid for extra bases. Yeah, Sanchez and Lasco, they have been the topic of trade discussions the last couple of years. Of course, Anibal Sanchez and Omar Infante went to the Dodgers last year for Jacob Turner and Rob Brantley, the catcher. And Burley and Johnson are here. There's their four starters last year. Breaking ball catches the outside half. You look at that Marlins team now, and boy, boy, you talk about a group of young, talented players. About a couple of outfielders last night making their big league debut for Florida. Jake Marisnik, the former Blue Jay. Debuted in center field and Kristen Yelich was in left field and Yelich had a big night. Three hits in his major league debut. And Danny Echeverria is leading off playing shortstop, hitting over 250 for the Marlins. Best average since July the 1st in the National League. A Danny Echeverria. Bobby Rasmus with a full count. Blue Jays still looking for their first base hit. Ball for third walk issued by Nolasco. That swing back fastball just missed the inside corner. Nolasco. Despite the three walks, has been around the plate all night long. So if you're going to play hit and run, here's a pretty good combination with Rasmus at first and Asturias at the plate. Asturias can handle the the bat. Colby can run a little bit too. Not going and breaking ball just around the outside edge. And even though you're down by a couple of runs, it's the fifth inning. Take a shot. Maybe open up a hole on the infield and a little ground ball that would be a double play. 
makes its way into the outfield. Yeah, somebody's got to cover second if Rasmus breaks. Velasco's thinking along those lines. Remember, Ricky Velasco picked up Jose Reyes in the first inning. Reyes just shifted his weight towards second, but that was enough for Nolasco to pick him up. He thinks something up. Don Mattingly thinks something is up. 1 and 0. Oh. Got to figure that Asturias is going to get a fastball. He had a fastball, but it was off the plate. Two balls and no strikes. Boy, if that face doesn't just scream baseball at you, you're not a fan. Don Mattingly, in his third season, is the Dodger manager. He is the ninth manager for the Dodgers since they moved to L.A. Very observant too. I was talking to him today, and he was observing how the ball's really flying out of here. Didn't it didn't carry like it is now? And he said, "I really have to adjust the way I'm going to use my bullpen, the way the ball is carrying here now." That's why he wanted to get J.P. Howell in for just one batter last night. A fourth pitch walk back to back walks issued by Nolasco with one out in the fifth. Chet Grimm has asked for time. He is the acting pitching coach. The Pitching coach Rick Honeycutt is away from the ball club. He was here for the opener on Monday night, but is tending to uh, death in his family, and he's away from the ball club. So Krim, the bullpen coach, is serving as the pitching coach. Chuck Krim is in his first season as the bullpen coach. Short and sweet, he delivered the message to his pitcher. Hey, don't walk anybody else. Maybe something like <laughs> you were paying a little bit too much attention to that runner, get the hitter. Yeah. Of course, now he's got a guy that hit the ball out of the ballpark. J.P. Aaron Seabee with 17 home runs. He's tied with Darren Fletcher for second on the all time leaderboard for Blue Jay catchers home runs. Ernie Witt is the franchise leader. Blue Jays still haven't picked up a hit against Ricky Velasco. This is sky to left field. Skip Schumacher coming in. Hanley Ramirez went all the way out to shallow left field to make sure Schumacher could see the ball. It's still twilight here, a difficult time for defenders. And look at the center fielder also, Andre Ethier, heading back to center field. Both of those players hustling over there to help out their left fielder. That's another instance that we we're talking about that you'll do anything to help your ball club win. Little things. That's what it looks like. Ball goes up there. If you take your eye off of it, you might not pick it back up. So Brent Laurie will bat. Blue Jays have runners at first and second, but now there are two outs. Laurie had a good night at the plate last night. Had a couple of singles, scored two runs, had a sack fly, ended up with two RBIs. Drives this one deep to center. Ethier on the run. Looking up. It's off the wall. One run is in. Historis is being waved at home. There'll be no throw. And Lori has tied it up. The first hit for the Blue Jays is a game-tying two-run double off the bat of Brett Lori. Couple of hits in last night's game, so maybe he's starting to come out of his slump. This ball is scorched to center field, trusting his hands a little bit more. Andre Ethier 
Didn't look real sure of himself out there on that ball. Top of the order, Jose Reyes goes after the first pitch and drives it deep to right. Puig is back, makes the catch on the warning track. And the inning comes to an end, but Brett Lloyd delivers with two outs. Blue Jays have tied it. We'll go to the six. It's a 2-2 game, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura, home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Start of the season, and he got off to a decent start as a member of the rotation. His first four starts, he was good. Two and zero with a very good ERA. Last five, bit of adjustment. The league may have caught up to him a bit. What's your explanation for the turnaround? Well, I, I think just better placement early on with his fastball. I mean, he had given up just four earned runs in those first four starts, going two and zero with that good ERA in the last five. Seven home runs that he has given up a big part of that and it's just the placement of his pitches that he just hasn't been able to really command consistently where he wants to throw the balls. You see flashes of it here and there from him with his fastball and with his slider. He's had some big strikeout games a seven and a six but the consistency just isn't there right now for him. He is battling them tonight. I mean, he really is. The Blue Jays have fought back and tied it up. Esmil has really battled them. This is just his 32nd career start. So he is inexperienced in that regard. His 10th start of the season, as we mentioned. His career high for starts in a single season is 13. That came with the Colorado Rockies in 2011. Brand new ball game, 2 2 game. Juan Uribe goes after the first pitch. Would you characterize Uribe as a free swing? Uh, I think so. <laughs> Boy, he is just looking for the ball as soon as he steps into that batter's box. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a fastball. It doesn't have to be an off-speed pitch. Just the ball somewhere close to a strike zone. The Dodgers, they're his fourth Big league ball club. He started out with the Rockies in Colorado. Ball on the strength. Uribe is now 34 years old. 13th big league season. Third season with the Dodgers. Pops this one up. Bautista is not sure. He can't see it. But his tourist goes out. That's what we were talking about with Schumacher and Hanley Ramirez. One down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Matt Garza. Three innings, two hits, had walked the better. He struck out three. He's throwing the ball very well right now. He's up against Andy Pettit. 
Cubs aren't done. They're going to make some more trades, and the hot rumor is Alfonso Soriano going back to the Yankees. The team that originally signed him. Do they have any more pitchers to trade? They've traded a lot of pitchers over the last couple of years. The Cubs? The Cubs, yeah. They've they traded Dempster. Scott last Feldman. Year. Feldman this year, now Garza. There's talk, too, that they're going to trade Russell, the left handed reliever. So, yeah, they, they're still thinking about. Cutting down with their veterans, adding more prospects to their system. I, I heard that Soriano trade. It makes a lot of sense. Yankees might need a third baseman. From the rumors that we are hearing about Alex Rodriguez, possibly out for this year. Out for. Ever, some people suggest, and of course, when that shoe drops, that's going to have ramifications all around baseball. One ball, two strikes, one out. Interesting development in New York with the Major League Baseball Players Association. Michael Weiner, the executive director of the Players Association, is in a battle with cancer. Former player Tony Clark was named the deputy executive director of the Players Association. Ball is hit on the ground. Reyes throws out Ellis two down. So I think Tony Clark is really well positioned to be involved with the leadership of the Players Association. Former player, very articulate, commands respect, understands the history. Of the Players Association. I applaud his being named to the directorship of that organization. I think it's a great move. Heard nothing but good about Tony Clark. Tony the Tiger. Tony the Tiger started out with the Tigers, of course, and played basketball at the University of Arizona. Some pretty good basketball teams. Played with Kenny Lofton there. And he is now in a good spot. He's a great leader, and I think the players obviously. In support of Tony Clark in that position, but we get back to the suspension of Ryan Braun, and boy, boy, we're hearing more and more players scream for increased penalties. Two outs. Crawford drives this ball deep to right and off the wall. Bautista plays it back to the infield. Crawford will stop at second with a stand-up double. His second hit of the night, his 14th double of the season. You could win a trip to Alcatraz. Look in specially marked cases of Sleeman. No purchase necessary. Legal drinking age required. Dodgers will leave after this ball game. Go back home after a six-game road trip, and it has been a terrific road trip. Dodgers trying to win their tenth straight road game. Quig goes after the first pitch. Reyes near second throws him out. And again, the Dodgers stand another base run. They have left nine on so far, and it's a 2 2 game.
Blue Jays baseball partnership may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays baseball partnership. Beautiful shot of the CN Tower as the night is taking over. Very enthusiastic crowd on hand. There have been two good crowds here for the Dodgers. 34,000 on Monday night, 32,000 last night. It looks to be a similar crowd tonight at Rogers Center. The Dodgers will go home after this ball game, as we mentioned. And how about tomorrow night at Dodgers Stadium? Ben Scully bobblehead night. How about that? You think they'll turn out for that? <laughs> and a first place team. Well, you know, Cincinnati Reds are in town, of course, Dodgers Stadium. And, you know, you were just talking about the Dodgers have a chance to win 10 games on the road. They haven't done that since they moved to Los Angeles. Think about that. 10 road games is quite an accomplishment, you know. Managers start out the season and say, if we can play 500 on the road and win two or three at home, we'll be in good shape. But Don Manningley's team, a game over... 500 at 25 and 24. So just think about it. They were awful on the road until this last recent hot streak. Look to win their 10th consecutive game. Last time they did that was 1954, where they won 10 games consecutively on the road. The umpires have left the field, and that's why we are. In a delay here, and it makes you wonder if Will Little, the home plate umpire, will. Three umpires. Yeah, they might move off, move him off home plate. While we wait for the umpires to come back, let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. Well, Escobar has really played well for Tampa Bay. They have raved about his defense. He didn't play in the series against the Blue Jays with a hamstring problem, but they applaud his play defensively and say he has a lot to do with their defensive turnaround. Tampa Bay has committed just 39 errors this year, second fewest in the American League. Pitching and defense. Well, we are set. The umpires are back. E. Cabrera takes a first pitch curveball for a strike. 2 2 ball game. Well, he came right back with the same pitch, and Cabrera chased it. The way he is thrown right now, Blue Jays have to be a little bit more patient. Walked a couple of batters last inning, and they both scored on the hit. Now he's this inning he bounced that ball up there, but Belky swung at it. There's another one out of the strike zone. Velasco just reacting to what he saw from Cabrera and said, I'm gonna throw another curveball so they go out. That's five strikeouts now for Velasco. Got good spin and good depth on that breaking ball to pick up the strike. Five K's now for Melasco. He mentioned he's making his fourth start since joining the Dodgers. A slider in there for his strength. Well, that's the one pitch, the slider that has really benefited him this year. Right hander is hitting 30 points lower against that slider against Melasco this year as opposed to last year. Paco Rodriguez, the young left hander, is loosening up. We've not seen him yet in this series. Jose has struck out and walked. Edwin in kind of shown to follow. He got a pretty good pitch to hit and had a good hack at it. Looked like he was hitting a soft single to right field. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking to untie this game. 
Yeah, he wanted to push a seat back in the fifth back. Bautista has 23 homers and he has always been a threat to knock it out of the yard. There he stays on it and singles to left. Well, you talk about a two strike approach. That was a beauty. Fans, it's time now for our Blackberry sneak peek stat of the game brought to you by the new Blackberry Z10 and Q10 built to keep you moving. This is very unique for Edwin Encarnacion. It's his improved strikeout percentage versus the walk percentage. In 2011, it was almost twice as high in his strikeout rate. Then last year, it got a similar to strikeout and walk rate. This year, he's walking more than he strikes out. Shortens up his swing with two strikes. That's unique for a big power run producing hitter in the middle of the lineup. A guy who walks more than he strikes out. And that leads to obviously more trips on the bases. The 353 on base percentage. But he's still one of the more dangerous hitters in baseball. And he'll get crazy his first couple of swings when he is up there. Really swing as hard as he can. Then he gets the two strikes. Pitchers try to get the punch out. They just can't get it. Shortens up that swing and makes contact. Now some home run hitters and run producers you'll trade home runs for strikeouts. It's just. The, nat the nature of the game. Chris Davis, Adam Dunn, Mark Reynolds, guys that pop into your mind as far as high home run totals and high strikeout totals. But not with Encarnacion. Well, Bautista looked like he was anxious to run. Velasco picked off Reyes in the first. Fly ball to left. Schumacher coming in makes the catch, and in Connor Schoen's retired. Bautista retreats to first. So Adam Lind will step in the box, and Lind's had a tough night against Ricky Nolasco. He struck out twice, and he's not going to face Nolasco this time. Don Mattingly, even though Nolasco has handled Linda very well, has come out of the dugout. He's got Paco Rodriguez ready. And it looks like Rodriguez is going to come in the game. I've not seen the call yet. Yeah. Mattingly is still talking to Nolasco. It's interesting. Mattingly doesn't have his pitching coach here tonight, Rick Honeycutt, but there's the call. He's got Rodriguez ready. A conversation with Melasco and he will turn the ball over to Paco Rodriguez, the young lefty. When he comes back, we'll have Lind against Rodriguez. Two outs in a tie game.
Sunday, July 28th, the Houston Astros will be at Raptor Center to take on the Blue Jays. The game starts at 1.07 p.m. The first 20,000 fans will receive a Mr. Sub Blue Bay. Call Blue Jays at 416 341 1234. You can log on to BlueJays.com to order your Jays tickets. So it's not by most. Rogers plus locations. Mr. Bag. Cooler Bag Day, Sunday, July 20th. New pitcher for the Rogers is an interesting story. It's Paco Rodriguez. 22 years old. He was drafted last June in the second round by the Dodgers. He made his debut last September. How about that? A couple of months later, you're in the big league. Steven Paco Rodriguez, 47 games, 2-2, two and two, 234 earn run average. He's got a very unique delivery. It's almost like he stops a couple of times out of the stretch. Really shows the ball. His strikeout pitch is a slider. He'll throw an occasional changeup. But he uses that slider a lot, especially the lefties. First member of the draft class of 2012 to make it to the big leagues. Snap throw to first. Bautista dives back in. Paco Rodriguez comes out of the University of Florida. Grew up in Miami. Well, you're right about an unusual delivery in that he extends his arm high above his left shoulder. And it's got to create timing issues for hitters. Yeah, it helps him to get over the mound. It shows the hitter, but he hides it behind his head. Hitters cannot see the ball because it's behind his head when he pulls it out of his glove. Late break on that slider, and Rodriguez is ahead one and two. Here's the delivery we're talking about. Get it out of the glove quickly. Point it to second base. Hold it right there, and you can see he's already going forward, but he still is able to get the ball up, keep his hand behind the baseball, and it's working for him. Batters hitting just a buck 35 against the left hander. It's the best in the National League for relievers. We got a little sneaky move to first as well. Lefties hitting 133, righties 137. Doesn't make any difference. Nobody's figured him out yet. One and two, two outs. Paco Rodriguez strikes out Lynn to close out the Blue Jays in the sixth. Jays strand the base runner. We'll go to the seventh. Rodgers back out.
content you'll find on your radio. Primetime Sports with Bob McCallum every weekday on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. Bob McCallum will keep you up to speed on all the great sports around North America. He'll track of everything with baseball, and certainly he'll give you his opinion. It's a highly regarded opinion. Bob McCallum every weekday, 4 to 7, on Sportsnet, The Fan 590. We move to the seventh. The Blue Jays needed this kind of start from Esmiel Rogers. The bullpen is beat up right now. Yeah. And he, another quick inning would really help. Uh, it's closing in on 100 pitches. You see 92 of them now. Off the end of the bat, Adrian Gonzalez bounces out to the pitcher. Steve Delabar. He did not pitch in the game last night. Four relievers worked behind Todd Redmond, the starter. Delabar was charged with four runs on three hits on Monday night. His first appearance after the All Star break. 93 pitches for Esmail Rogers, and the Blue Jays have been fairly consistent with their approach of not allowing starters to go. Much over 100 pitches. High and deep to center field. Colby Erasmus breaks it down on the warning track. He is there, makes the catch. Two down. Hanley Ramirez just missed it. The all new, completely re engineered 2014 Acura MDX, the luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Great shot of the CN Tower. I have a Toronto standing guard over Rogers Center. 2 2 ball game. One of a ball game. Blue Jays have tied it up. They have just two hits. Brett Laurie with the big hit. A two out, two run double in the fifth off Ricky Nolasco. Tied it up. You know, I think that's why Donnie Mattingly wanted to go out there and talk to his starter, Ricky Nolasco. Two hits. No chance of winning the ball game when he took him out. And he wanted to get a message over before he went to his bullpen. He pitched a heck of a game. Nolasco walked four, and two of those walks came ahead of Brett Lorry's double. And Lorry's was the first hit off Ricky Nolasco. Jose Bautista picked up the second hit in the sixth. There's a drive off the bat of Andre Ethier down into the right field corner. A fan reached over and caught the ball. Looked like it might have been below that wall. The fan stood up and gloved the ball. It'll be a ground rule double for Ethier. You know, and Jose Bautista upset with that because he's very aggressive in the outfield. He's got the great throwing arm, and I think he wanted a chance to hold Ethier to a single, and I thought. He had a pretty good chance of doing that. Ball hit hard by Ethier down the right field line. Bautista is setting himself up to get that ball if it doesn't bounce like that where the fan reaches over. I yeah. thought he had a chance of staying in the ballpark and for him to make a play. AJ Ellis with two outs takes the first pitch strike. I agree with you. Jose was thinking about getting good position to play a possible carom off the wall but it looked like that ball was going to bounce out of play even before the fan reached out and caught it. The Dodgers tonight really having trouble delivering a clutch hit there just one for 13 with runners in scoring position. Totally different story than the first two games. In those first two wins they combined to go 14 for 29. Just under 500 with runners in scoring position. Different story tonight. Rogers is pitched out of jam after jam after jam. He has used the slider when he needs it to the right handers. He had bases loaded and just one out when Ellis was up last time in the fifth inning and struck him out.
He has thrown 100 pitches so far. Two and one, two outs. Eat here at second. Rogers has done a great job of staying in control of his emotions many times tonight. He could have lost his focus with so many base runners on board but he didn't do that. Dodgers have stranded nine in this game. With one trying to go away with a breaking ball, got underneath it but caught the inside corner. That's what pitchers would call a backup slider. Heath here with his double, second hit of the night, his sixth hit of the series, skip Schumacher on deck. Full count, two outs. Bounced foul. Good slider. Down and away. It has really worked for him against the righties tonight. Here's where Aaron Seabee is going to go out and talk about it. From a catcher's perspective, you get a good sense for what a hitter's doing. You can see where his body is. Is he diving out over the plate? Is he thinking about covering that outside pitch, the slider? Aaron Seabee may have sensed that and went out to the mound to talk to Rogers and you can take a shot inside. Yeah. You don't have to give in to A.J. Ellis here. You got a base open. See if you can't tie him up with an inside pitch. Line to left field. Melky Cabrera gets there, and the inning is over. The Dodgers won for 14 with runners in scoring position. They've stranded 10. Rodgers has pitched out of jams all night long. Melky Cabrera flashed the leather in the left. Will go to the bottom of the seventh. It's still 2-2. In 2014 Acura MDX, luxury SUV redefined. Experience it now at your local Acura dealer. Well, tonight's drive of the game goes to Brett Lorry. This is a big hit for the Jays. They've been waiting for it. And Brett delivered, doubling off the wall into center field to knock in two runs after a couple of blocks. That is a good sign if Brett Lorry starts getting that power stroke back. Lorry. Had a two hit night last night. He drove in up there tonight. He is one for two with the game tying two out double. Kobe Rasmus will start things off. Rasmus singled and scored on the double by Lori. Paco Rodriguez struck out Lynn to end the sixth. 
That's a nasty pitch. A little hesitation really can mess up your timing, and then he gets on top of that slider and really bends it down in a way. Really messes up your timing. Holds it, and, and you just don't have time to load up on your back leg when a guy goes, starts to pitch, stops. The timing can be really messed up, and he was really handy with the lefties, too. Well, you got to applaud the Dodgers for moving Rodriguez quickly through their system. Of course, they had a need. They lost Scott Elbert, their left handed reliever, for the season, so they had to get down into the minor leagues, and Rodriguez has answered the bell. Had his contract selected by the Dodgers last September 5th and made his debut against the Giants on September 9th. He got an inning ending double play off the bat of Brandon Belt, and that's how his career started. He got off to a great start last September. He pitched scoreless relief in 10 of his 11 big league appearances. I like that breaking in young pitchers in the bullpen. Don Manningly can take them and put them in situations where the percentages are in their favor to succeed. Rasmus goes around. Rodriguez has his second strikeout. He like, gets both the lefties in, he faced in this ball game. Like this situation right here. A couple of lefties back to back. You feed them sliders and get yourself a couple of strikeouts. Rasmus with a couple of strikeouts tonight. Meiser is Sturis. He scored the second Blue Jays run back in the fifth. He was right behind Rasmus and scored on Laurie's double. Aaron Seavey will follow is Sturis. We're in the seventh. It's a 2 2 game. Well, if you think that Rodriguez is going to have trouble with the switch hitting, is Sturis. Right handers haven't fared much better against him either. Now he's going to throw you a slider. You, you can see that, so make sure that he throws that ball, starts it away. So when it breaks, it breaks over the middle of the plate. If he throws it inside part of the plate, got to take it. It's going to be off the plate. Right does a nice job working both sides of the plate. Right handed hitters are just 7 for 51 against Paco Rodriguez. That's a 137 average. He's not giving up anything. Lefties are now eight for 62. This Dura stays this alive. Little backdoor action there. This bullpen for the Dodgers has been great in the month of July. And we talked about the Blue Jays and how well they did up to the All Star break. This team here. Match them. A 135 ERA for the bullpen since the 5th of July. And they made some changes. They went down and complimented Rodriguez with Jose Dominguez, who has since been placed on the DL. As Aaron Sebia is standing on deck, it's a full count. Off the end of the bat, Mark Ellis ranges to his left, makes the play. That's the second out of the inning. Looks like another breaking ball that was cued off the end of the bat. A weak grounder hit the second. Throws a lot of them. Donnie Mattingly says he throws the ball where he needs to. You're seeing that tonight. Sliders in on the right handers. He'll try and backdoor them. J.P. Aaron Sebia. 17 home runs on the season. Just three against left handed pitching.
you would think his numbers would be higher against lefty pitching with the ball coming into him. Why has he hit more of his home runs against right handers? Keep that front shoulder in, maybe some hanging sliders. That's what I'm thinking. Become a pretty good breaking ball hitter. Hits this one hard. He knocks Ramirez to his backside and he throws wild. And Aaron Sevier will be awarded second base on the throwing here by the shortstop Ramirez. The ball went into the seats out of play. So the go ahead runs in scoring position at second. Comes up with and has plenty of time. One hopper to the shortstop. Now he gets up and airmails it. And I think he knew right away. Watch his face as soon as he throws the ball. Not even close. His sixth error of the season. This just his 36th start at shortstop. And Don Mattingly, after the Ramirez air, is making his way toward the mound. Aaron CB hit it hard and really knocked Hanley Ramirez off his feet. By the time Ramirez got up, he threw wildly to first and committed the air. So Rodriguez is out of the ball game. The uh, youngster, Chris Withrow, we saw him work on Monday night. He'll come in with the go ahead run at second base. Brett Lorries had a big night. Two run double back in the fifth. It's a tie game, 2 2. Tomorrow night when the Astros are in town, first of four games against the Houston Astros. The game starts at 7:07 p.m. Ticket prices include a hot dog, nachos, popcorn, peanuts, an apple, chips, and the soft drink. All this for only $39. Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com and stop by most Rogers Plus locations to pick up your tickets for Thursday night's Blue Jays Grand Slam combo. Chris Withrow in for the ninth time with two outs and the go ahead run at second. Withrow finished up Monday night's game here with a couple of strikeouts. He got a free and easy delivery, fastball slider. Throws hard. Got to be ready if you're Brett Floyd. What about the possibility of using Bonifacio as a pinch runner? Aaron Sebia at second. Of course, doesn't run like Bonifacio. We're in the seventh. Yeah, it, it's late. Uh, if there were no outs, or maybe one out, maybe. I think Brett Lorry can score in the outfield playing deep. Ether in center field and Puig in right field playing deep. I still think J.P. and C.B. with two outs can score on a base hit. Nobody's keeping him close. He certainly has a big lead at second and needs one. Two outs. Upstairs, Reyes is on deck. I guess the thing that I'd be afraid of if I was managing and making that decision with two outs, I'd lose my 
starting catcher if Brett Lurie makes it out here. Burn a couple players. Ninety-six from Withrow and Lori found it straight back. Well, one of the things that Chabatola is trying to get through with Brett Lori is trust your hands. You're quick enough. You're still quick. You don't have to move your body for it. Just use your hands, and he does, and he smokes that ball off the center field wall. Lori's fifth double came with two outs and tied it up. Two balls and a strike. Way outside, three and one. Well, Laurie's got to be aggressive, but at the same time, selectively aggressive. Matoa trying to encourage Laurie to just let the ball come out of the pitcher's hand before you commit. Reyes is on deck. Of course, he's the switch hitter. You don't have to go out there and get it. Good job. Down and away. Laurie takes the walk. He passes the baton to Jose Reyes. So the Blue Jays get their leadoff man up. Got a chance to give them the lead. Reyes is 0 for 2. He walked in the first. Hit a two run a home run last night in the sixth. Batting as a left handed hitter. It was a line drive over the wall and right. Yeah, and really spreads out at the plate. But still has some pop. See him tracking that fastball up and away. AJ Ellis doesn't have a lot of big league experience, but he is the leader. And watch the concentration of Reyes track this baseball. Who's that remind you of? Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson. Pete Rose used to do that. Really track that ball all the way into that catcher's glove. And then Pete Rose would talk about you. That ain't going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs, first and second. Blue Jays trying to take the lead in the seventh. Two and zero. Oh. Dodgers trying to extend their. Win streak to six straight. But before we get another pitch, Chuck Crib will come out and talk to his pitcher, Chris Withrow. Withrow just been called up. He pitched in Albuquerque, Triple A. Up to a great start in Triple A. Brandon League loosens up for the Dodgers. He was the winning pitcher in last night's game. Picked up a win with just two thirds of an inning of work. There's no question he's got a big league arm. He just a little more polish, a little bit more command. He's got a big league fastball. Withrow was a Dodger first round pick in 2007. 24 years old. 2 and 0 to Reyes. Now 3 and 0. Melky Cabrera on deck. There's a strike. Reyes taking all the way. He's Seen a lot of pitches in his hit bat. His first look at the big right hander. Two outs. Aaron Sebia at second. Lori at first. Little looper, and that's going to be caught by the shortstop. Withrow gets out of it. The Blue Jays can't take advantage with two outs. Jays have stranded five. The Dodgers have left ten. It's a 2 2 game. Steve Delabar will come on in relief. Ismail Rogers, another good start for the Jays.
Cards, food, spice, rum, McCarty, proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Second inning, Dodgers threatening to score a run. They need a big defensive play, and here it is. Brett Lorre with tonight's smooth move around the horn, catching that hot shot by Ellis. A turn by Isturis. Brett Lorre gets the smooth move tonight. Brett Lorre's had a good night in the field, a good night at the plate. He's one for two with the game tying two out double. Steve Dalabar into the ball game. That's Mel Rogers. Seven strong innings tonight. Delavar appearing in his 41st game. Lots of strikeouts. 61 of them from Delavar with that good fastball. Delavar threw 25 pitches in the game on Monday night. Pitched an inning. He was charged with four runs on three hits. Big blow in that inning off of Steve Delamar. Came from the guy at the plate. Skip Schumacher had a three run home run in that seventh inning. Delamar walked the first battery face and gave up a double to Hanley Ramirez. Inside it jams Schumacher. A long run for Cabrera. It bounces safely off the warning truck. We're in the eighth inning. Boy, the Dodgers have had chances all night long, but you got to tip the cap to Esmail Rogers. He pitched out of jams all night long. The Dodgers stranded at least one base runner in every inning tonight. Thirteen base runners against Esmail, just two runs. Delamar strikes out Schumacher. One down in the eighth. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Terrible injury for anybody, and Tim Hudson stepped right in the middle of that bag. He was covering first base, and when Eric Young stretched to hit the bag, he stepped right on the Achilles tendon. It was an ugly looking injury. Uribe bounced to third, Lori from his knees, and Incarnacion can't make the play. It's an infield hit for Uribe. And Carnacion got a tough bounce on the one hop throw from Lori. Yeah, that's the in between hop that we're seeing. Once again, the range from Lori at third base. It's a reaction play. You can see that in between hop. It looked like it hit right at that seam where the dirt and the turf come together. But what a play by Lori once again at third base. The Dodgers have won nine straight road games. They're trying to win ten in a row for the first time since 1954 when they were the Brooklyn Dodgers. Mark Ellis, the second baseman, is 0 for 3. He hit into a double play in the second inning. Started by Brett Lorry, we showed you that great effort by Lorry to start the 5 4 3 double play. Delamar will take another play like that from Lorry. In there for his strike, it's one and one. Like Lori may have jammed his thumb a little bit. Keeps moving around that right thumb. Yeah, after that dive on that ball, that base hit just there by Uribe. He hasn't been able to shake it out. There goes Uribe. The hit and run is on. Ellis can do nothing more than pull it foul. Let's watch it one more time. Watch the right thumb. I wonder if the the ball might have hit her. He jammed it into the carpet. May have been the reason he didn't get as much on the throw, and then he 
Coco back on that right hand as he braced himself. But he continues to move that right hand around. Uribe almost caught leaning. Delavar got him mid step as he was stretching out for another stride. And he was in the air, had to dive back quickly. Always thought that was the best time to throw over to first base, right? Boom. He wasn't that far off, and it was close. One and two. Cut on and fouled into the glove of Aaron Sevilla. Second strikeout for Delabar. Two down. That's Mill Rogers, as we mentioned. He was in trouble all night long. He had at least one base runner in each of his seven innings, but he pitched out of jams consistently. He gave up ten hits, walked a batter, had four strikeouts, and threw 104 pitches, and leaves the ball game tied at two all. Second time this year that Esmeal's thrown seven innings for the Blue Jays. Well, you talk about a timely seven-inning effort. The bullpen was gassed. Paul Crawford lines it to his third. Delabar gets out of the top half of the eighth inning. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a choo choo game. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Sportsnet Magazine presents The Beauty of Sport. Visit sportsnet.ca slash beauty of sport. Pick up your Sportsnet Magazine on who stands down to see athletes like you've never seen them before. Ronald Belisario in for the second time in this series. Belisario pitched an inning in last night's game, and it's Belisario and Kenley Jansen, their eighth and ninth inning guys. He was good in, in that eighth inning yesterday. Gave up a hit to Rasmus, but struck out Bautista. Great numbers all the way around. 50 games now for Belisario. And he's got some good numbers. Hasn't allowed an earned run over his last 16 appearances. Got great movement with that fastball. Belisario's from Venezuela. This is his fourth season with the Rodgers. Pitch for Venezuela in the World Baseball Classic in March. Originally signed by the Florida Marlins as a non drafted free agent, August of 1999. Melky Cabrera will lead things off. He'll be followed by Bautista, then Encarnacion. It's a 2 2 game, bottom of the eighth inning. On the ground, Ellis knocks it down, but he won't have a play. Lead off single for Melky Cabrera. Here comes Rajay Davis. So Cabrera does his job. 
He gets the leadoff single. Now Davis with the stolen base threat. But first the base hit by Melky Cabrera. Lots of sinkers from Belisario. They get a lot of ground balls. Well placed that time by Cabrera. Ellis almost comes up with it. That would have been a heck of a play. It got into his glove. But the momentum of him going to his left knocks the ball out of his glove. Infield hit for Cabrera. Cabrera leaves one for four. Rajay Davis, 26 steals. Got a big lead at first. There he goes. A.J. Ellis. Not in time. Mark Ellis tried to sell it to Dan Bellino. A.J. Ellis made a strong throw, but Rajay Davis beat the tag. Watch the second baseman try to influence the umpire. First move, there he goes, straight steal. Watch how Mark Ellis catches it. Acts like he tags him and throws it around the horn. We got him. <laughs> but you can see he's clearly safe. Stolen base number 27 for Davis. And the Dodgers know you better keep an eye on him at second. Davis is second in the American League in steals to Jacoby Ellsbury. Far fewer games for Roger Davis. He's just a threat anytime he is on the bases. Bautista, one for two with the walk. You know that Belisario is thinking about releasing that ball a little bit quicker. Maybe he'll throw a fastball, make a mistake with Davis behind him. Mark Ellis almost directly behind second base, keeping an eye on Rajay Davis, plus playing Bautista to pull. AJ Ellis, the catcher, is going to go out and talk to you. Belisario. Rajay Davis with the stolen base number 27. He has 71 career steals of third. It's only been caught eight times. Trying to steal a third. He's got another big lead. Belisario is going to. Who knew that was coming? Inside spin moves. Would you go with nobody out, or would you let Bautista hit here? I'd let him hit. Just focus on the pitcher right now, especially with two strikes. He pokes it to the right side. Gonzalez knocks it down. Throws it behind Belisario. Here comes Davis in for score, and the Blue Jays have taken the lead. Bautista with a terrific at bat with two strikes, poked it to the right side, and Davis scores from second. Just an outstanding effort right there from Jose Bautista. With two strikes, this is tough to do. Belisario throws him a slider, and he just pokes it the other way. Tough play all the way around. They throw away. Throws it behind Belisario. That's an easy run for the Blue Jays with Rajay Davis running. Well, what a good job by Bautista. He took that outside pitch and just served it over to right. Gonzalez made a good play. Bautista's credited with an infield hit. Gonzalez... Charged with his ninth air of the season, and the Blue Jays have taken the lead. Edwin Encarnacion still nobody out. Watch Jose. It's a slider down and away. With that, with two strikes, just try to push the ball the other way. Tough to do when you're trying to hit that ball at 94, the sliders low 90s. Exceptional. Well, it's certainly easier if you make up your mind that all you're going to do is have a productive at bat. He changed his approach with two strikes, and rightly so. He did a good job. 
Ball and a strike to Encarnacion. Belisario can change speeds. Casey Jansen is ready in the bullpen. He started throwing at the beginning of this inning. Just in case the Blue Jays score, and they have, so we'll see him in the top of the ninth. A couple more wouldn't hurt. Well, the Dodgers have been held to two runs on 11 hits after scoring 33 runs in the previous three games. In the dirt, Bautista thought about it, but it didn't bounce far enough away from A.J. Ellis. Yeah, he is such a heads up base runner. Bautista always looking to, to get an edge. He takes off right there. Just a couple more steps. And when the ball's in the dirt, he's thinking about it, but you're right. Ball's in front of him. It's not far enough away. Maybe he does that with one or two outs, not with nobody out. He's in scoring position already. Full count. Conishon takes ball four. Blue Jays have taken the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Still nobody out. How about that at bat once again by Edward Encarnacion? Another walk after he fell behind by two strikes. Trey Hillman, the bench coach, is on the horn to the bullpen, and here comes Don Mattingly. They've got a reliever ready, and there's the sign from the skipper. Brandon League has been throwing. Rajay Davis has scored the go-ahead run. He came into the ballgame as a pinch runner. And let's not forget, Delki Cabrera had the leadoff single to start the eighth. That came off of Belisario, who will leave the ballgame in favor of Brandon Leak. Blue Jays with a 3 2 lead, two on, still nobody out. Lynn to bat when we come back. On Sportsnet 360 with Eric Smith, it's connected on East Ontario, West End Pacific, and soccer on Sportsnet World. It's Panama and Mexico in the CONCACAF Gold Cup semifinal. Nobody out. Adam Lynn facing his former teammate Brandon League and takes a first pitch strike. League was the winning pitcher in last night's game. It's two thirds of an inning. League. For just nine pitches. High and deep to center. 
Ethier makes the catch. Bautista tags at second. He moves up to third. Encarnacion was all the way to second, just in case that ball would land safely. But Lind is retired. Bautista moves up. It's first and third. Just one out. Yeah, still just one out. So a productive at bat right there from Adam Lind advances that runner where he can score on a long fly ball down by Colby Rasmus. League has that split finger fastball, so he's never out of an inning. He can get that ground ball. Ismail Rogers back out after his seven innings. Lead to Rasmus outside. Miss for that splitter. Brandon League now 30 years old, former Blue Jays second round pick. Always had a good arm. Great combination working out of the bullpen. Fastball and splitter. You can do that when you throw that hard. He hit 98 when he was here with the Blue Jays with good movement. Rasmus is late on that fastball. Well, that's exactly what league wants to put in the hitter's mind. Put that fastball in your mind, make you think about getting the bat started, and then you become vulnerable to that splitter. One and two, one out. There's the strikeout. League. It's a fly ball out and now a strikeout. Well, you called that a couple of fastballs. Colby had a chance to hit. And once you get to two strikes, you're getting that hard split finger. Meister is Sturis. Very aggressive on the first pitch. Two outs. Runners at the corners. Fastball downstairs. Blue Jays have taken a 3 2 lead looking ahead to the top of the ninth. It's Puig, Gonzalez, and Hanley Ramirez. There's a little looper in the left. Schumacher over makes the catch. The inning is over. Blue Jays leave a pair, but they've taken a 3 2 lead. Bautista with a great at bat set up the go ahead run and scored on an air. He punches the ball to the right side, gets an infield single when Gonzalez throws it away. Rajay Davis scored all the way from second. 3 2 Jays, Casey Jansen into the game.
Rajay Davis into the ball game as a pinch runner in the bottom of the eighth. He takes over defensively in left. Casey Jansen into the ball game, and he just misses Yasiel Puig, who squared to bunt. Puig got out of the way of it. Jansen making his 35th appearance. This is just his second save opportunity in the last 32 games. His last save was July 13th at Baltimore. 35th game of the season for Jansen. ERA under three. 18 to 19 in saves. Quig had an RBI double in the third and a base hit to right in the fifth. Two for four tonight. Three and oh. Puig, then Gonzalez. And right behind him, the cleanup hitter, Hanley Ramirez. Puig threw the bat all the way over toward the dugout. The bat boy will retrieve it. Another thing. Got to learn here in the big leagues. Got to wait for the umpire. Let you know if it's a ball or a strike. Three and one. There's ball four, and Quig is aboard. Leadoff man reaches in the ninth. Boy, that is such a big walk. Dodgers can do so many things. Quig has great speed. He's not a polished base stealer yet by any means. He has six steals, but he's been caught three times. Three times, and don't want to take the bat out of this guy's hand. Not the way he swings it here in this ballpark. Adrian Gonzalez, two more hits tonight. Jansen gets ahead of him. Well, the Dodgers trying to keep their streak alive. They have won nine straight road games. Gonzalez is two for two against Casey Jansen. Drives this ball deep down the left side, slicing into the seats out of play. Seen him take a couple of balls like that out of here when he was with the Boston Red Sox. Adrian Gonzalez hit a three run homer up there in Oliver last night in the eighth inning. It was his 228th career home run. But it was the first home run that took his team from trailing to leading in the eighth inning or later. Came up with a big hit last night. He's in the hole, 0 and 2. Jansen strikes him out. Gonzalez chased for that breaking ball. One out. Now for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Ivanka Osmo. Ramirez has gone old for four tonight. He struck out in the third inning against Esmil Rogers. Blue Jays have a 3 2 lead. The Dodgers have out hit them 11 to 5. Well, Jansen got that ball in on the hands of Ramirez. He's been up there hacking this whole series. They're taking care of him today by fastballs in and those breaking balls away. Rogers, Esmeralda Rogers did a good job of that. A couple of ground outs, a pop up. Rogers did a terrific job tonight. Gave John Gibbons seven innings. Left the ball game with a 2 2 tie. Delabar worked the eight. Now Jansen. Quig was leaning. He was leaning at first base. You see him looking in right there. 
to the dugout to get a sign. Well, he's got a lot of help at first base in Davey Lopes. Lopes is the first base coach. He was a terrific base stealer in his playing day. And as a coach, his team's always one of the higher steal percentages in baseball. Not running. Ramirez pops it up over near the seats. Lori at the wall, but it's beyond his reach. Two rows out of play. Hanley Ramirez in a hole. Owen Chu Puig with the leadoff walk. Come on and miss. Ramirez strikes out. Two down. There's that breaking ball, just like Esmil Rogers with two strikes. Casey Jansen throws it to the hottest hitter in baseball. Curveball right over the top to pick up the strikeout. Jay Pierre and Sebia textbook blocking that one. So I'm Day Eath here trying to keep hopes alive for LA. He's had another good night tonight. Two for four with the double. He is gone six for 14 in the series. Five extra base hits. Goes after that first pitch. Cut that ball with late movement. Casey Jansen looking for his 19th save of the season. He is 18 for 19 in save opportunities. One and two. He's got that outstanding command. Against the lefties, he likes the back door, that cutter. He can push you off the plate if he needs to. Here's the one two. Quig is running. The ball is hit into center. Rasmus is not going to play it. It's over his head. Quig's going to come in to score, and this game is tied. Colby Rasmus got too close to that ball, played it on a hop, it bounced over his head, and the Dodgers have tied it here in the ninth. It's a base hit for Eve here. His seventh hit of the series, and an air charged to Rasmus. Playing deep. That's the go-ahead run, and it looked like he had a beat on it. He came in as soon as the ball was hit. Watch him in center field. He sees it. Here he comes. And then he said, you know what, I got to lay back. And you're right, got a little bit too close. It bounced over his head. Puig was running on the pitch. So he scores easily. 3-3 three, three ball game. The Blue Jays, two more errors tonight. A two-out error has allowed the Dodgers to tie it. A.J. Ellis, the catcher. Ball and a strike. Can talk about the air being costly, but Puig was issued the leadoff walk in the ninth. Jansen walked him to start the inning. 
One one pitch. Cut on and missed. Stranded a pair of runners in the bottom of the eighth when they took the 3 2 lead. Ellis pops this behind second. Is Sturis out? He gets there and makes the catch. But the Dodgers have tied it up in the ninth. Colby Erasmus committed the air. Casey Jansen walked the leadoff man. It'll be JP Aaron Sebia when we come back. Brett Laurie, a two run double in the fifth. And then back to the top of the order, Jose Reyes. Saturdays are presented by Austin Pizza. Saturday, July 27th, the Blue Jays take on the Houston Astros. It's a 107 game start. Special kids prize tickets in the 200 and 500 level outfield seats. After the game, kids 14 and under can run the bases just like the pros. Call the Blue Jays at 416 341 for tickets. Log on to BlueJays.com or stop by most Rogers Plus locations. J.P. Aaron Sevier swings at the first pitch from Brandon League. League entered the ball game in the eighth inning. The Blue Jays scored the go ahead run. Bautista punched the ball to the right side, and when Gonzalez threw the ball wildly at first, Davis scored. But the Dodgers have tied it up. Hot shot. Easy hop for Uribe. And he throws it away. Aaron Senior better get back to first. He made a turn towards second. The ball skipped under the glove of Gonzalez. Uribe had plenty of time. It got to him very quickly, but he short hopped the first baseman. Aaron Sebia will give way to the pinch runner, Emilio Bonifacio. And a heads up play right there by Mark Ellis, the second baseman. Normally, Gonzalez comes up with this. It just doesn't, the ball doesn't come up. But Mark Ellis, the second baseman, as soon as the ball was hit to the third baseman, he's running over to back up just in case the ball gets away. And not allowed that runner to stay at first. Pinch runner is Bonifacio running for Aaron Sebio. JP hit the ball sharply to third, and the Dodgers have committed three errors tonight. Bonifacio with terrific speed. He has 11 steals. He's been caught five times, and 
Of course, the Dodgers are well aware of his abilities on the bases. He being a former National Leaguer. Lori shows bunt and takes one outside. Rajay Davis entered the ball game in the eighth inning as a pinch runner and stole second. A.J. Ellis made a strong throw, but Davis had a great jump at first. Design play right there. Brandon Lee holding on to the ball to see if Brett Laurie squares around. Dodgers wanted to see if he would tip what he's doing up there at the plate. Not running, he bunts it in the air and gloved by Gonzalez. Brett Laurie bunts foul out to the first baseman. As Gonzalez was crashing from first and takes a line drive bunt. Forty five degree angle. Just get it down. See him giving way too much right there and then tried to punch at it. You saw how the bat had dropped. He got underneath it and hit it in the air. So went out. Reyes at the plate. Reyes has gone 0 for 3. He walked in the first. Bonifacio with a bigger lead at first now. Don't you think Bonifacio has got to take a shot here? Well, after the bump was popped up, th yeah. definitely. Definitely. You, know, you have to take a shot. Uh, Brandon Lee's got that splitter. That'd be a tough pitch to try and throw the runner out on. He's got a, not a slide step, but it's not a high leg kick. It's in between. Not running. On the ground. Ellis at second to Hanley Ramirez. No return throw. Well, Mark Ellis unloaded that ball in a hurry, but with Bonifacio and Reyes, not going to turn two. You know what he did as he charged that ball. Hard came after it. Looked like he was going to try and get into the base path to try and catch it and then get the runner. Watch him come hard, and now he said, you know what, let me just catch it and get that force out at second base. A couple of veterans in the middle of the diamond. Ellis probably thought, you know what, we're not going to get two. Let's just get the lead runner here. And Hanley Ramirez didn't even think about making a throw on Reyes. So Reyes is at first base. Now two outs. Rajay Davis batting for the first time. Davis entered the ball game as a pinch runner in the eighth and scored the go ahead run at the time. We had mentioned A.J. Ellis, the catcher for the Dodgers, has been terrific throwing out base stealers. Well, he did something interesting right there. He told Lee to calm down, and then he, with his body language, said, take a deep breath. <laughs> <laughs> Two outs. Bounce back to the mound. Lee gloves it. The inning is over. The Blue Jays get a base runner to start the inning. Can't take advantage of the air. We're going to extra innings. It's a 3 3 game.
Jays franchise record pitching an inning in last night's game for the Blue Jays. Pitcher to start his career. Perez now has gone 22 consecutive innings without allowing a run to start his Blue Jay career. That's a new franchise record. In extra innings, that's the guy you want out there. Hasn't given up an earned run yet. One and one, 149 earned run, or excuse me, no earned run. has 149 righties. Lefty's not much better. We'll face the bottom of the order of the Dodgers. Schumacher takes first pitch strike. Gastoli is behind the plate as Aaron Sebia was removed for the pinch runner. Tapped out in front of home. Totally got on it quickly, but it's foul. So Tolly's behind the plate. The Jays have one extra player remaining on their bench in Mark DeRosa. The Dodgers have out hit the Blue Jays 12 to 5, but the score is tied 3 3. Marker stays alive. The Blue Jays this season in extra inning games are 5 and 5. The Dodgers, they are 5 and 4 in extras. Jays have won 13 games decided by their. Final at bat. Schumacher strikes out, waves at that breaking ball from Perez. First out of the top half of the tenth. Boop Jays have had a very good bullpen, but what they have done since the break reflects the fact they've had to pitch a lot this year. This is since the All Star break up to the moment, 20 and two thirds innings of work. They've given up more hits than innings pitched, and 21. Runs 16 earned runs. And it just shows that sooner or later, all that work is going to catch up to your bullpen. Yeah, even though you get the four days off at the All Star break, starters have to go a little bit deeper for you to help out. And John Gibbons can spread out the, the work for those bullpenners and they can stay strong. Another thing that factors into the workload for the bullpen is that 100 pitch limit. The Blue Jays stick pretty true to 100 pitches for their starters so when you get to 100 pitches you're going to go into that bullpen yeah, if it's the fifth inning sixth inning that's three or four innings every night and, and that matches up with the stat that we showed in last night's game at the Blue Jays bullpen working the most innings per night about three and two thirds every night team that uses the most relievers innings in the National League is the Pirates and their bullpen took a big blow last night. Jason Grilly came out of the ball game with a forearm injury. And he has been placed on the DL, but they've had to work a lot. Josh Johnson in the bullpen tonight. Yeah, he sure is. That's interesting. Josh Johnson started game one of this series on Monday night, went two innings plus three batters. 67 pitches. On Monday. Never hurts when you can go down and talk shop with Pat Hinton. Juan Uribe. At the full count and he'll take ball four. So Perez walks. Uribe with one out. The Dodgers will fly back to Los Angeles after th this game. They will take on the Cincinnati Reds. Pretty good matchup. Dodgers in Cincinnati. Cincinnati five games back in the central in third place behind the Cardinals and those Pittsburgh Pirates. Don Mattingly 
going through his signs. Mark Ellis, the second baseman, he's gone over for four. But he had been swinging in a hot bat. He had raised his batting average 20 points in the last five days. Robbed of a hit earlier tonight by Brett Laurie at third base. On a five game hit streak that's at stake with this at bat. Ten for his last 20 coming into this game. That'll raise your average. That'll do it. It's this one hard but well foul. Into the second deck. Ellis has collected a hit in each of the first five games of this road trip. For the season, he's a 288 hitter on the road. Hits this one high and deep to left, and Ellis has just given the Dodgers a two run lead here in the 10th. The first earned runs allowed by Juan Perez. Ellis is fifth home run and he's extended his hit streak to six straight. Yeah, that was an 0 2 pitch, too. You want to bury a ball or you want to throw one out of the strike zone? And Ron misses his spot. Ellis, a hot hitter. A hot hitter is going to take advantage of the mistake. Fastball comes back over the middle of the plate. And Ellis hits his fifth. Boy, those walks come back to haunt you. Rajay Davis, the left fielder, ranges back and retires Carl Crawford. It's a second out of the inning. Well, Mark Ellis, not a complimentary player he has been. He's the everyday second baseman batting down in the order, but he gets big hits for this ball club. And we've talked about that. You've got to have your star players. I mean, that, there's no question about that and the Dodgers have their share of star players but you have to have those complimentary players those big leaguers who've been around the veterans know how to play they don't get all wrapped up in the situation in the, of the game either there, there's no panic well the Dodgers showed an awful lot of character in this series they scored one in the six three in the seventh four in the eighth to come back from a five run deficit in last night's game they have been knocking on the door all night. They have left at least one runner on base in every inning tonight. Got a base runner on every inning. Andre Eath here hit the line drive into center that bounced over Colby Erasmus a lot. Quick to score. Kenley Jansen. Picked up his 12th save last night. He is standing by. He's ready in the Dodger pin. Quig fouls it back. Well, how about the walks in the last two innings? Casey Jansen walked Quig to start the top of the ninth. He came around to score. And then the one out walk to the number eight hitter, Juan Uribe. Tough to walk, Uribe, too. He's a swinger. This ball is hit high and deep to left. Rajay Davis back on the track at the wall. Jumps home run. Week. It looked like he got jammed. But he is so strong. He fights it off and knocks it into the Blue Jays bullpen. His ninth home run of the season. And, and one of those type of players, because he's so strong and he creates so much bat speed, those fly balls that are warning track balls for a lot of people end up going out. You're right. It looked like he was out on his front foot, got jammed a little bit, hit it high. Just out of the reach and into the bullpen for another home run. Three hit night for Puig. And watch the ball labeled down around the label of the bat gives you a good idea just how strong he is 22 years old and he is some impressive specimen 22 RBIs to go along with nine home runs
the Dodgers with a 6-3 lead to the disappointment of a good crowd here at Rogers Center. They've turned out for the entire three game series 102,000 for the three game series. And the Dodgers on the verge of sweeping away the Blue Jays. And winning 10 in a row on the road. They haven't lost a series since the middle of June. That's how things have come together for the Dodgers. The last time the Dodgers won 10 in a row on the road occurred June 7th, 1954. And the names are names that you associate, of course, with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Clem Labine earned the win pitching in relief. Home runs by Roy Campanella and Duke Snyder helped the Dodgers win that 10th road game back in 54. The franchise record for consecutive road wins is 12 established in 1924. Hanley Ramirez has had a rough night. He is 0 for 5 with a pair of strikeouts. The Blue Jays finally cooled him off. Kind of sums up the series right there, doesn't it? Disappointment. Here, how about this? Carl Crawford in three games has 18 at bats this series. 18 from your leadoff batter. Ramirez gets a base hit down the line. Chance for extra bases. Adrian Gonzalez goes to third. Hanley Ramirez picks up his first hit of the night. His 14th double of the season. Since June 4th, when he came off the disabled list, he's had the highest batting average in Major League Baseball. And not too many cheapies either. Lots of line drives. Juan Perez with his first rough inning this season. Dodgers have scored three and they're threatening to add Andre Ethier. He's had a great series. Ethier with three hits tonight. Seven for 15 in the series. This is six innings now in this series where the Dodgers have scored three plus runs. Offense. They're seeing the ball. They had so many opportunities early in this game, and it only was because Rogers pitched out of so many tough jams and made great pitches to strand base runners early in this game. And Eth here has another hit. It's going to score two more runs. Andre Eth here has had some series. Another double for Eth here. His fourth hit of the night. The Dodgers had so many opportunities. You just imagined it was only a matter of time before they came through with the big hits. It's happened here in the tenth. Five runs. AJ Ellis, the ninth Dodger to bat. Last four games eight, 10, 14, and nine runs scored by the Dodgers. No Matt Kemp either this series, and he was rocking and rolling. Matt Kemp was placed on the disabled list before this game. He sprained his ankle in his first day off the disabled list. And you can see they got a lot of spirit in that Dodger dugout. This is driven in the air to right. 
Bautista is there. The inning is finally over. But the Dodgers bat around against Juan Perez in the tenth. They've taken a commanding 8-3 lead. Kenley Jansen will come into the ball game. Three sixty with Eric Smith. Then it's connected on East Ontario, West and Pacific. And great soccer action on Sportsnet World. Panama and Mexico in a Concacaf Gold Cup semifinal. Lots coming up right after this ball game. Now the Blue Jays have got a deep hole to dig out of, and they're going to go up against the Dodgers' closer, Kenley Jansen. Even though it's not a save situation, Jansen was up. Loose, ready to come into the game, and Manning is going to use him. So you have to bring him in. They also had Carlos Marmol throwing a little bit. But Jansen picked up the save in last night's game. Got a great fastball with cutting action. He's got tremendous control. 69 strikeouts and just nine walks this season from a big right hander. Three, four, and five for the Blue Jays, but they find themselves down by five. Here in the tenth, Jansen will not face Bautista in the game last night. He came in to face Incarnacion to start the night. Bounce toward third. Hanley Ramirez behind Uribe throws Bautista out. One down. When you talk to the Dodgers, they'll tell you that things turned around when Hanley Ramirez came back. Quig had been elevated to the big league club on the 3rd of June, but when Hanley Ramirez rejoined the ball club, everything started to turn around. We had a chance to talk to the general manager of the Dodgers today a little bit, Ned Coletti, and I asked him, hey, your club is on a roll. What's up? He says, you know what? We're starting to get healthy, and he mentioned Hanley Ramirez. Three days before they're going to break camp, he broke his thumb and missed a big part of the season. Then, as soon as he came back, messed up his hamstring, and he's on the disabled list about the first two months of the season. Yeah, and he's a key player, obviously acquired last year. They also he also mentioned the early injury to Zach Granke, the collarbone that he broke in that brawl in San Diego. Kind of show and lifts a fly ball into shallow center. Eighth gear gets there, and the Jays are down to their final line. Cranky missed 29 games with that broken collarbone, and while he was out, the Dodgers went 10 and 19. Those faces on the Blue Jays bench sum up everything that's happened tonight. They took the lead in the eighth, only to see an error allow the Dodgers to tie it up in the ninth. And then they blew the doors off the Blue Jays with five runs in the tenth. Dodgers record when trailing after eight, one and 39 coming into this game. 
Adam Lynn. Quickly behind 0 and 2. The Blue Jays are on the verge of losing seven straight. The second longest losing streak in franchise history to start play after the All Star break. They lost eight straight games after the All Star break in their inaugural season, 1977. Check that. This is their sixth loss after the All Star, their seven loss overall. Yep. They lost the Sunday game in Baltimore. That Play the Tampa Bay Rays, one of the hottest teams in baseball. Dodgers, one of the hottest team in baseball. And things just haven't gone their way. Again, two more errors tonight. The costly error by Kobe Rasmus in the ninth inning. That allowed Yasiel Quig to score from first and tie the game. Two and two, two outs. Lynn strikes out the Dodgers sweep the Blue Jays they win in extra innings eight to three. The Blue Jays have lost seven straight. Coming up next it's Blue Jays Express on Sportsnet 360 with Eric Smith. It's connected on East Ontario West and Pacific. Soccer action on Sportsnet World Panama and Mexico in the CONCACAF Gold Cup Series. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night. Houston in town for four.